Thank you, Reese. It's a beautiful 75-degree day in Glendale, Arizona for the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl at University of Phoenix Stadium. The 10-2 Penn State Nittany Lions ranked ninth in the country, taking on number 11 Washington as the Huskies make their first appearance in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Penn State, it's seven time it's been in this event, and it is 6-0. Penn State losing two games this year by a total of four points, top 10 in both offense and defense. Washington, first time in 25 years with back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Dave Pash alongside Greg McElroy, tying Luke and Bill in a minute. And Greg, as you look at this matchup, yes, it's not a playoff game, but it's a big game for both of these programs. Once they were championship-type teams, and then they hit that dry spell for different reasons. But under Chris Peterson and James Franklin, they've returned to that championship form, a chance for a big punctuation mark for this season. And then both teams should be great next year, too. I think last night's game in the Cotton Bowl was between two conference champions, but I'm not sure it was the Big Ten and the pac 12s best teams. I think Penn State is the best team in the Big Ten, and I think Washington is the most complete team in the Pac-12. Should be a fascinating matchup here in the desert. And Greg, we get to see one of the most dynamic players in college football play likely his last game at Penn State. Hi, my name is Saquon Barkley, running back at Penn State. Um, I was born in Bronx, New York. Raised in Copley, Pennsylvania. I moved there when I was five years old. Uh, my mom and dad felt like it would be a better opportunity for me and my family. Uh, I attended Whitehall High School, uh, played there for three years under Coach Gilbert. When I was a small kid or smaller in high school, and that drive that I had to take it to the next level was the same mentality that I had uh, when I got to Penn State. And um, My goal was to try to go down as one of the best uh, backs to ever come out and one of the best players to ever uh, play in Penn State history. Yeah. And Lee certainly has done that. You look at a school record for rushing touchdowns with 41. And his role is going to be limited today, though, which is interesting. May not return kicks, we're told by James Franklin, and may rotate series. But when he's on the field, he might be the best player in college football. He was great in the Rose Bowl last year, and we get to watch him a little bit today in this game. Anyway. There's a reason why Mel Kuyper has him as the number one prospect on his big board. It's his versatility, but I love how unselfish he is, too, in pass protection. Seeing the blitzer going right at the thigh boards to save a life. Boom. Gives McSorley a little extra time. And then in the passing game. Look at him go up, climb the ladder with one hand, and make the snag, put the brakes on, and get north and south. And then, like you alluded to, not sure he's going to do this today, but in the return game, look at the top end speed. This is against Ohio State on the opening kickoff. You see the Jets, and you see his capabilities with the ball in his hands. He's going up against today a very good defense, though, Tom. Well, it certainly is, Greg, and the strength of this Washington Husky defense, it starts up front with Vita Vea, the massive interior defensive tackle. Now, not all the plays Vea will make will show up in your stat sheet. Take a look at him here on tape, and look at how he occupies blockers at the point of attack. It's what he allows the linebackers to do for Washington, to flow to the football freely, make tackles in the open field, and they're going to have to do that today against Miles Sanders and Saquon Barkley, but Vita Vea is a Massive presence that doesn't just do it upfield, he does it for the guys behind him as well. And they're number six in points allowed, 14 points per game, the fewest Washington has given up since 1991 when it shared the national championship. And then Penn State offense, number seven in scoring 22 straight games with 20 or more points. First time here in Glendale at the Fiesta Bowl. It's a eight different bowl game in the last eight seasons. And here come the Huskies for the Pac-12. Big Vita Vea. Be interesting when he and Barkley collide. Well, Penn State, remember last September, they got throttled by Michigan. A lot of people wondering, is James Franklin the right guy? Well, he's proven he is with their resurgence. They've lost three games since by a total of seven points. The Rose Bowl by three last year to SC, by one to Ohio State this year, and by three to the Spartans. And Penn State is ready for its first Fiesta Bowl in two decades.
last year, Penn State won the Big Ten Championship, did not go to the college football playoff, the team that did, the Washington Huskies. Washington lost two games this year at Arizona State and at Stanford, and their quarterback has been one of the most reliable players in college football the last two years. Hi, my name is Jake Browning. I'm a quarterback at University of Washington. I'm from Folsom, California. Uh, my dad played quarterback at Oregon State University and has always been a major influence in my life. You know, some of the things my dad brought up from his experiences, you know, definitely helped my decision as far as, you know, trusting Coach Pete with, you know, four or five years of my life and, and feeling like I could live in Seattle for, uh, you know, for, for a long part of my life. And so you know, I think those all went into why I chose UW. And it was a good decision. Browning holds the UW record with 77 career touchdown passes coming into today. And some people have criticized his 2017 campaign, but if you look at it from an efficiency standpoint, he's actually improved from a year ago. Up in completion percentage, down in turnovers, and down in sacks. Although you can criticize him for not having as many touchdowns, still a very effective player for the Huskies. Third meeting between Penn State and Washington. Pac-12, 1-7 so far in balls. Big 10, 5-0. Kickoff of the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl is coming up. And now we'll look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Seriously? I don't think this guy knows any other moves. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy and the college football playoff. Washington and Penn State getting ready to kick off in Glendale at University of Phoenix Stadium. What a job Chris Peterson has done. Remember the first two years, 16 and 10, but the last two, 22 and 4. And he's the author of one of the more memorable plays in the last decade, bowl game or regular season. That iconic Statue of Liberty when as a head coach at Boise State here at University of Phoenix Stadium in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl. James Franklin, 14 and 12 in his first two years, 21 and 5 in the last two. Remember, obviously, the Sandusky scandal. Bill O'Brien gets Penn State back on solid footing, then goes to the Texans. Franklin takes over from Vanderbilt, and he's got Penn State, a championship caliber program again. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. And we welcome you to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The Washington Huskies won the toss, elected to defer, so Penn State will get the ball first. Ladies and gentlemen, on your feet for the kickoff for the 47th annual PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. We told you that Saquon Barkley may not return kicks at all. He is not back for the opening kickoff. Miles Sanders, who was their kick returner two years ago, is the deep man for the Nittany Lions. Sanders from the two. And he's down shy of the 20-yard line. Well, Saquon Barkley from Copley, Pennsylvania, was Mr. Football in that state and also was a great High school basketball player at Whitehall High School, his great uncle Iran Barkley, three weight world champion boxer. And Saquon will start the game at running back. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, number two in the entire country in all purpose yards. And perhaps the number one pick in the NFL draft. He's yet to declare, but just about everybody assumes this is his final college game. Here's Trace McSorley, the quarterback, and they run a shovel pass, and Barkley going to lose yardage. Dropped by Keyshawn Bieria for a one-yard setback. What makes Barkley so elite is the way he can beat you in so many different aspects of the game. The passing game, on the perimeter, up inside between the tackles, make you miss, and then just beat you with track speed. He's so elusive and NFL scouts have told me he might be the best running back prospect they've seen since Adrian Peterson. Now he's such a good pass catcher too Greg. He's number two on the team in catches. McSorley in trouble and his pass incomplete intended for Juwan Johnson so it's going to bring up third down and 11. We're talking so much about Barkley but Trace McSorley the quarterback that's a big reason why Penn State is 10 and 2 this year and last year made it to the Rose Bowl. He doesn't get nearly enough love. 
He's a little overshadowed naturally given all the credit given to Saquon Barkley and rightfully so. But Trace McSorley's a top five quarterback in college football and has been a big reason why Penn State is playing in their second consecutive New Year's Six Bowl game. You can hear the Washington fans. Pretty good turnout for Husky Faithful. Underneath to Barkley. And Barkley with that great speed. Able to get away from the defender. And move the chains with his 48th catch of the year. He's such a difficult matchup. Right here working against Keyshawn Bieria, a linebacker. That's advantage Nittany Lions every single time. Good job by McSorley finding him on third and long. Barkley is healthy. But again, we're told will not get his normal number of reps in this ball game, which is an interesting decision. I mean, you've had some guys that not played Josh Rosen this year, Leonard Fournette last year. Because of minor injury for Fournette as McSorley gets about eight yards on the carry. He's got 11 rushing touchdowns this year. The last time that happened, Michael Robinson, who ended up playing running back in the NFL, had that number. He's the best quarterback in the Big Ten. I know JT Barrett gets a lot of praise, and rightfully so. But Trace McSorley, I'd take him every single day of the week and twice on Saturday as compared to the rest of the Big Ten quarterbacks. We've got another quarterback standing next to him now leaving. That's Tommy Stevens. So he'll put those guys in there together as Barkley runs straight ahead for a first down to midfield. 13-yard pickup for Barkley. They get the defense's eyes working away as Stevens works out of the backfield. And they give it to Barkley up inside where he does most of his damage. You thought that might be a critical matchup today between the tackles rushing because of how good Washington is along the defensive front. So far, Penn State's having some effectiveness on the ground. Yeah, Washington only gives up 92 yards per game on the ground, number one in the country. Over the middle it goes. Johnson on the grab. Slammed to the ground at the 45 after a five-yard pickup. Hey, Greg, you know, when you look at this from field level, we talked coming on, could Penn State handle Washington's front and could their linemen get up to the second level? We've had two big runs, one from Trace McStorley, one from Saquon Barkley, where the offensive line for Penn State is getting up to the second level, making a big difference in this overall run game for the Nittany Islands early. Great point, Tom. Also keep an eye right here on number two. Lined up at the number three. That's Tommy Stevens, the backup quarterback. And they're going to throw it to Stevens and a great tackle behind the line. Miles Bryant, a corner, former walk-on with the big hit, a loss of two. When Tommy Stevens gets in the game, your antenna has to go up. As a defensive player, they are making a conscientious effort to get him the football when he's out there. And a great defensive play right there by Miles Bryant, recognizing it, working to the outside and making the tackle for loss. Barkley not in the game here. Miles Sanders is in the backfield with McSorley on third and long. McSorley throwing a deep ball, got a man. Receiving for Deshaun Hamilton, the number one pass catcher all time at Penn State. Got 210 grabs for his career. And the point after 7-0. Penn State. What an opening drive by the Nittany Lions. Deshaun Hamilton, young, scrappy, and hungry, not throwing away his shot. And Trace McSorley loving the deep ball. Nittany Lions lead early.
Great opening sequence by Penn State. Look, right here at the safety on the far side hash, and they have rotation inside. It's a great job by McSorley, recognizing how much space he has to give Deshaun Hamilton the slot fade right outside the numbers. Perfectly thrown in stride and a good job after catch by Hamilton to hit Hayter. Outstanding start for Penn State. And think about it, Washington does not give up big plays. They only allowed one play from scrimmage over 40 yards the entire season. That play right there was 48 yards. As Trace McSorley was perfect, six of six on that drive. Ahmed and Dotson are deep for Washington. And Ahmed running it out of the end zone. And a flag comes down. Ahmed tackled well short of the 20. Mike DeFee is our referee. We have a Big 12 crew for today's game. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number 40. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down and 10. It's going to back up Washington to the seven yard line. You know, just watching Deshaun Hamilton, his story here, that, that's his older brother Darius, who is autistic and is actually nonverbal. And, and this story about Deshaun, it, it's incredible, inspiring. It's about love and faithfulness. He's a part time caregiver, he's taken care of his older brother. Since he was in first grade, his mom battled cancer for many years, so he had to personally care for his brother while being a student as that ball is caught by Hippenhammer out of bounds. And so it's great to see Darius here today and just need to see that relationship. And Deshaun has a tattoo, DKH, Darius Kendall Hamilton. He normally hits that tattoo several times before he goes onto the field for the first time. It's an incredible relationship between him and his brother, and he wears his heart on his sleeve every single time he takes the field. Eight yard pickup for Washington on first down. Here's Miles Gaskin on second down, and he's dragged down at the line of scrimmage. We talked so much about Barkley. Well, Miles Gaskin, equally impressive this year, running the football. He's closing in on his third straight 1,300 yard season on the ground. He's so good in the open field. He almost always makes that first defender miss and has tremendous acceleration as well. Miles Gaskin's a game changer out of the backfield for Washington and has been for the last couple seasons. Third and two, Browning going to air it out, taking a shot here, and he overthrew the receiver, Aaron Fuller. And so it's fourth down, three and out for the Huskies to start the game. Grant Haley in coverage that time. Aaron Fuller had a step, actually went back to a very similar play than what Deshaun Hamilton scored on for Penn State. Press coverage across the board, try to hit a slot fade, just out of the reach. A little amped up early for Jake Browning. You got a true freshman punter here, going to kick it from his two yard line. And DeAndre Tompkins, who has a punt return for a touchdown, is the deep man. This is a line drive, and it's muffed at the 35 yard line. And it's a battle in the pile. Who's stronger? As they're trying to rip it away from Tompkins. I think got it back, but they're trying to pull it free. It is Penn State ball, though. So Penn State will have the football at the 35 yard line. That was Dotson there trying to rip it away from DeAndre Tompkins. 7 0 Nittany Lions early on. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by PlayStation 4. Greatness awaits. Ford, going further so you can. Chick fil A, party season is Chick fil A catering season. Order now. And AT&T. That's one of the great things about Bowl Week. And the players get an opportunity to be out here in great weather and can do some good things too. Getting together with Hope Kids and Children's Cancer Network. Some uh, kickball games with uh, the Penn State football players this week here in Arizona. 
that's one of my favorite parts. It's just the philanthropic activities in the community. It's so special. You remember those moments visiting with the children at the hospital. Well, Penn State with the early lead, and this is not unfamiliar territory for the Nittany Lions. They have played more plays with the lead than any other team in the country. They're number two in point differential, but they have two losses, back-to-back -back weeks at Ohio State, at Michigan State. But overall, as talented as any team in the country. Barkley not in, Miles Sanders in it running back, and McSorley pitching it ahead on the shovel pass, and it's a gain of about three. Trace McSorley, he was a winner in high school, three state championships in Virginia, lost the uh, his senior year in the state title game. His dad, Rick, was a quarterback at Richmond. And he's got 28 games in a row now with a touchdown pass. That's a school record and second longest active streak behind Baker Mayfield in the country. McSorley with time here now moving to his left, backing up. And try to hit Sanders, incomplete third down. Take a look at today's Chick-fil-A impact players. Now he's yet to get involved, but you know Mike Gesicki, the tight end for Penn State, he's going to be a feature player throughout today's game. And then Ben Burkirvin on the other side with the RPO game that Penn State likes to employ. He's going to have to be very disciplined with his eyes and make sure that he stays within the scheme. Burkirvin getting a lot more action since Azeem Victor was suspended from the team. McSorley stepping up. Over the middle, there's Kasicki flashing and making a big first down grab into Washington territory. A great job by Trace McSorley keeping his eyes downfield. You're going to see this a lot, a three-man rush for Washington. McSorley knows he has some time and a good job by Kasicki uncovering across the middle for a big pickup. McSorley taken off here. And a flag comes down after a gain of two. So they had that big third down pickup in their own end on the first touchdown drive and a short pass to Barkley and then McSorley going downfield to Gasicki into Washington territory on this possession. Holy defense, number 95. 10 yard penalty would be added to the end of the run. First down. Levi Onzerike. It's called for defensive holding, so automatic first down into inside the 35-yard line. You usually don't see this from Washington. Penalties. No, Greg, Dave, with that three-man rush, when you got a mobile, mobile quarterback, it is difficult to be able to come up, make plays, rush the passer, and then account for the quarterback's legs. That's why McSorley's so dangerous here early on. He does a great job of extending plays. Reminds me a lot of what Baker Mayfield has been praised for in the Big 12. That's a good point. McSorley stepping up here, going to take a shot into the end zone, overthrew his man, and it's intercepted by Brian Byron Murphy. Got a foot down. The ruling on the field is an interception. Murphy's third touchdown. interception of the season. Let's see if he indeed got the foot down. Boy, I don't know. It's really close. You know they're going to take a look at it, of course. There should be a good angle at it right here. And there he's got possession. You see that toe, that left toe. Looks as though it is dragging when he does have possession. Of course, it's very close, and it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn. But I think this one is likely going to stand. All right, let's bring in Dave Kataya, our rules expert. Your thoughts, Dave? There's two things here. First of all, you got to look at the feet first to make sure they're in bounds. Then you look at the ball, find the ball. To me, he has both. He's got that foot drag, as, as Max said. Now he's got the ball. Watch the back foot. You see the back foot? I see no ball movement. I think this is going to stand as called. That is a tremendous job of awareness, knowing where he's at on the field for a defender. I mean, that is big time. Dragging that toe and securing the catch all at the same time. I tell you, Greg, McSorley had exactly what he wanted with Gusecki as well, because if you just throw it up, he's got such a height advantage, he just didn't keep it in bounds. 
Hey, guys, do you think if that was ruled on the field incomplete that it would get overturned? Is it that indisputable? Dave, Greg, to you guys, that that's an interception regardless of what was called on the field? To me, that's 90% a catch, but 90% doesn't get it. Okay, so like I said, this is going to stand. They might confirm it, but it really looks like a stance to me. I don't see anything to overturn it. Right. It has to be 100% to overturn it. I agree with you guys. I just think it's interesting how what's called on the field usually makes the difference, even though replay ultimately has a decision to make. But because you need 100% beyond all doubt to overturn something, that, that call on the field is still what's most important. Absolutely. Remember, 100%. Jack McDonald, our replay official. This would be big for Washington, given the momentum Penn State has. Let's hear the After call. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Interception, touchback. So Washington will take over on the 20 yard line. It's only the ninth interception thrown by McSorley this year. And Murphy, a guy that missed a ton of time after getting injured in practice, came back, started the last couple of games, fully healthy now after a few weeks in between games. That is such a big time interception. I mean, that is, you don't see that every day on Sunday. I mean, that is big time. To drag the toe to know where you're at on the field and yet still reel in the ball. See Gaskin leaving the backfield there, so an empty set here for Browning on first down from the 20. Browning in trouble, backing up. And what dangerous play in the pass, broken up by Troy Apke. It was intended for Drew Sample. Jake Browning, junior quarterback from Folsom High School in California. He was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year last year. Numbers not as great this year. In fact, over the last six games, only has four touchdown passes. But that's because Miles Gaskin has gone wild running the football. Gaskin has nine touchdowns in the last three games. So the numbers aren't as gaudy as last year. But Chris Peterson told us, look, he's been just as good as he was a year ago. Here's LeVon Coleman tackled for a loss. Brandon Smith, a former walk-on, makes the stop at the 19, a one-yard loss. It's third down and 11. Early in this game, Penn State has done a great job against the run. Now, they're a defense that wants to bring a lot of pressure, so a situation like this, a third and long, is really beneficial for them because they'll get in a three-down front defensively, and then they can bring pressure from all over the place. Jake Browning's got to be very disciplined with his eyes, recognize where that pressure is coming from, and see where he can find some space or some holes within the zone. He's got one of his weapons back, Hunter Bryant, a tight end, who had missed some time with injury, but Browning not going to have a chance to throw it to him as he sat back at the 12-yard line. Chavis eventually got him down, but there were several Nittany Lions in the backfield. It's fourth down. This time not bringing pressure. Just a three-man rush with the spy by Cabinda who rallies up as soon as Browning leaves that throwing posture. A great job up front by this Penn State defensive line sneaking between double teams and bringing Browning to the ground. Second punt for Whitford from the goal line, and he just got it away before it was blocked. There's a flag down. We'll see if it's running or roughing the kicker. Tompkins is tripped up back at the 36-yard line. Garrett Taylor made contact with the punter, Joel Whitford, in the end zone. Still a great kick. That was 53 yards. He got drilled, and he still kicked it 53. This is going to be a five-yarder, guys. Yeah, he did not hit the plant leg, so... That should be just running into the kicker. Running into the kicker on the receiving team. If a five-yard penalty is declined, first down, timeout. Penn State football, 7-0, Nittany Lions lead. Welcome back to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Penn State leading 7-0 over Washington here. University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale. The Nittany Lions started the season 7-0. They beat Northwestern by 24. The Wildcats haven't lost since. Then Penn State lost back-to-back -back games by one at Ohio State, three at Michigan State. But they did accomplish something that had not been done in a decade. Two straight 10-win seasons. They had a win at Iowa on the last play. They beat Michigan by 29. There's no question, Greg, this Penn State program is back. They are. They're not going anywhere, too, with the way James Franklin is recruiting. 
I said it earlier I think they're the best team in the Big Ten. I know they lost at Michigan State. That was a three and a half hour rain delay and they lost by one to Ohio State in their house. How about this little uh, trickery there the direct snap to Barkley and then option fake to the quarterback but a nice tackle by Tevis Bartlett. And no Greg, game. They, they've blown out everybody. I, I think that's the thing to note with this team. It's not as if they've had close games outside of those two losses. It's been all Penn State all year long. No doubt. Other than that Iowa game where it really showed their resilience and going down on the road and getting a last second touchdown to win the game. McSorley keeping it on second and long. What a fake. And he gets hit hard. How come there's no flag there? That drill by Ezekiel Turner. He was down. While we're watching this, let's bring Dave Katayan here. I just, Dave, what's the ruling on this in college football when you're the quarterback and you slide? Once you slide, you need to stay off of him completely because he's down when the slide starts. If you take a look at this, and he looks like he's getting hit. And to me, this is a foul for unnecessary roughness. I don't. I didn't see anything that indicates targeting on that one replay. Should have been a penalty on Washington. McSorley passes high, intended for DeAndre Tompkins. Let's take another look at this, though, Dave. As he's sliding, he's giving himself up. Player leads. And you can see the helmet to helmet collision there as McSorley is clearly down. That looks like forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. I agree make. because remember, he's defenseless. He gets hit with the arm and probably the helmet. Okay, this very well could have been a targeting call, certainly an unnecessary roughness call. Should have been something. Instead, it's second and 10. On the Penn State 47 yard line, they bring Stevens in motion. McSorley running again. And he's into Washington territory. Miles Bryant on the tackle along with Vita Vea. Pac-12 defensive player of the year. So you see the toughness. The you see the toughness by McSorley, though. Pop up as if, hey, no big deal. Where's the flag? All right. So be it. Play the next down. And here he's got an important third down here on Washington's side of the 50 to keep this drive alive. A tough young man. That Trace McSorley. I love how you put it yesterday. You said this guy doesn't care about anything. And that, I mean that as a as a positive. It's the That's a good thing. You love those qualities in a quarterback. And a throw on target that was juggled and then pulled in by Hamilton for a first down to the 40. They've had three big third down conversions already here in the first quarter. Hamilton's been on the receiving end. Of two of the three. Just a good job uncovering on a slant route and good timing by McSorley, knowing that there was a dropper just inside, fitting it right in that window in stride for the first down. Ton of time, McSorley. Open receiver to the 20. It's Blacknall. Got behind the defense, plus one of the safeties slipped and fell. And a big play to the 20. Washington going with that. Drop eight coverage again. A lot of bodies out there in coverage, but still a lot of space underneath those safeties where he finds Blacknall for the first down. You yeah, saw Ezekiel Turner there slip as he tried to get his footing. Penn State just doing a great job of locating the voids in that coverage and isolating bodies in holes, making easy reads for Trace McSorley. Great point, Tom. Here is Saquon Barkley. Dives to the 12-yard line. So a gain of eight for Barkley. You see Barkley go aerial all the time. And here he is. Just whoop. Sure, I'll take four extra yards and avoid contact. I tell you, Greg, you don't realize how sudden and explosive he is when you see how big he is. So crafty, Tom. Just has such a good feel for the position and a great understanding and feel for the defenders and the space around him. McSorley dumps it off to Gasicki. It's a first down. And Gasicki to the five yard line. First and goal for Penn State. 
and all Nittany Lions here in the first quarter. You got to give credit to the new offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie and the way he's mixing up run and pass different looks using RPOs and nakeds and quarterback runs and downfield shot plays. It's his first game calling the offense for the Nittany Lions and he's off to a terrific start. Yeah, Joe Moorhead who was the offensive coordinator left to be the head coach of Mississippi State. Ronnie did call plays in a bowl game a couple years ago for Penn State. But now is the full time guy. Barkley straight ahead down to the four. Greg, they're just giving Washington so much to have to deal with. You know, they're shifted into the backfield, they're shifting out of the backfield. They're motioning tight ends across the formation. Now you've got a quarterback in the zone read game. You take Barkley, you take McSorley, then you move the pocket of the passing game. That's a lot to deal with here inside of one quarter. On second and goal, shovel pass Gasicki, and he's dropped at the two-yard line. So it's a big third down for Washington's defense, which has had one of its worst quarters of the season in terms of yards a lot. I mean, Penn State's over 170 right now in total offense here in the first quarter. Facing a lot of plays, too. That was their 23rd snap for Penn State's offense. You see a lot of hands on the hips. If I'm Ricky Ronnie, I'm dialing up a quarterback run right here or something underneath to Gasicki. Barkley just shifted into the backfield. And Barkley gets it into the end zone. Touchdown, Penn State. Number 17 on the season rushing and number 20 on offense 22 overall if you include special teams and a touchdown pass by Saquon Barkley this year he can do it all and he just gave his team a 14 nothing lead in what is likely his final college football game he's not the best in the business for nothing folks Saquon Barkley finds Pater yet again with a little helicopter action Two touchdown lead for the Lions. New Year's Day will have the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. First, it's Georgia and Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. 5 p.m. to kickoff time from Pasadena. The number one Clemson, number four Alabama, the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. I'm saying all SEC championship game. Mac, what do you got? Ooh. I'm going to say, I think you're right. I'm going to say Georgia and Alabama. Wait a but second. you're making me put it on the record right now, even though I have a couple days to think this through. Yes. I flip-flopped over and over and over again, but I do. I think <laughs> You did. Last night at dinner it was Clemson, Oklahoma. Yeah. I'm going to flip tomorrow and then again on Monday. All right. <laughs> Let's see now how Washington responds, as you said. I mean, they barely run any plays. They've had six plays. And they, Jonathan, Jonathan Smith, their offensive coordinator, is gone. He's now the head coach at Oregon State. So Matt Lubick, son of uh, longtime Colorado State coach Sonny Lubick, he's calling plays along with Peterson with help from Jake Browning. He called plays at Oregon last year. He got his work cut out for him against his Penn State defense now, trailing by two scores. Yeah, they just haven't gotten anything going on the ground. And that's what this entire offense is predicated on. What Miles Gaskin and LeVon Coleman and Savon Ahmed, those are their most important players. Because of the injuries to their wide receiver core, and they're not getting any movement right now up front against this Penn State front. And in trouble here is Gaskin in the backfield. And he's down for a loss of about four or five in the play. Well, fellas, I was talking to both uh, Matt Lubick and Coach Peterson on the field uh, pregame, kind of just talking about the mode of operation. And really what Matt Lubick said is he's going to be up in the booth so he can lay everything out. Scott Huff, the offensive line coach, is going to be the conduit between him and Coach Peterson. It sounds like Coach Peterson can trump any call, but as the game continues to flow, Matt Lubick will have more and more of a role in what gets called on down and distance. On second and 14, Browning drilled as he throws, and a flag is down in the backfield. 
The way things are going, Washington needs this to be on Penn State. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 34. 15 yard penalty to the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Well, that's big. Shane Simmons with the personal foul penalty. And you got Sharif Miller and Shaka Tony, two pass rushers, weren't starting the game. They were suspended for the start of the game. Nothing that happened out here in Arizona. So Shane Simmons, who's a rotation guy, is in there in that situation. He roughs the passer, and that's a big first down by penalty for the Huskies. This could be a double pass here as the deep ball is caught by Disley, a former defensive lineman. Down to the 10 yard line. Andre Bocelli threw the pass. Just when you're starting to wonder about Washington's play calling, they dial up a beautiful trick play on the double pass. Well executed and terrific throw to Disley as he got out in the open field. How about the ball by Bocelli? Here's Ahmed out in space. Cuts it back inside. Dives for the end zone. Lost the ball. They haven't signaled yet what happened. I thought that he was down and the ball hit the ground and came out. They may just rule him down to begin with at the one yard line. That that looks like that's going to be the call. Here's Mike the defeat. on the field is that the runner was down by rule short of the goal line. I think the ground causes this, guys. Yeah. He's down. Well, he's down there even before the ball hit the ground, but it did not cross the plane. You see the knee down there and he's short. It's a good job by this officiating crew. Seeing that knee was down, seeing the extension, great effort by Ahmed as he made a guy miss and extended for the goal line, but just a little bit short. And I imagine that his coach, Chris Peterson, will say, hey, keep that ball high and tight. Don't leave it up to the officials. A much needed drive for Washington. They'll be on the one when we start the second quarter. Welcome back to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Game the Nittany Lions have never lost 6 in a all time in this game. As we take a look at our Northwestern Mutual planning for success. Washington's offense has to have a plan for Penn State's pressure packages. They blitz more than any other team in the Power Five. And then for Penn State's defense, they have to tackle Miles Gaskin in space. They've done a tremendous job of that to this point holding Washington to negative 11 rushing yards through one quarter of football. The biggest play on the double pass that has him set up for a first and goal from the one and it's Browning keeping it into the end zone. Touchdown Washington. That was huge for the Huskies. After getting dominated in most of that first frame. Seventh rushing touchdown for Browning. Four play, 75 yard drive. And that 52 yard pass by Bocelli to Disley, setting up the touchdown as Washington cuts the lead in half. And there's a big play on a second down pass. Remember, second and 14, and Browning gets hit by Shane Simmons. Roughing the passer is called. And then shortly thereafter, the trick play. What a time to call it. And so well thrown by Bocelli. You got to give him some credit. He's probably going to go over to Browning and say, I'm coming for you next year as the quarterback. Just a great <laughs> job executing what's been the only positive offensive play, really, for the most part for Washington so far. And there in the middle uh, is Bob Rondo, who, uh, Rondo who's been the uh, 
37 year play by play announcer for football and men's basketball. He is retiring after today's game. He's been a staple in Seattle and with the Washington football program for four decades. Always got to give love to the local radio guys, man. Have to. He's a legend. When you're respected as much as he is by your peers, it means you must do a heck of a job. Congrats to him on a tremendous career. Eli Gold, your guy. Bama, Miles Sanders across the 20 and up to the 25. How about at the last Washington home game, the, the band spelling the name? How many play-by-play -play guys get that kind of love? That is love right there. That's fantastic. You are the voice of the Arizona Cardinals. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing Pash here on this field by a local band. Any truth to that? He's going to get a parade. The owner, Michael Bidwill, is here. Yes. So if you guys keep talking about it or if we show him, there's a <laughs> chance that a uh, raise could be in store. The question is, is your name going to be right there between Adrian Wilson and Charlie Trippy <laughs> in the Ring of Honor? I think that's where you're going to be heading. Yeah. The Ring of Pash. <laughs> I might just name the stadium. And, what, you, and what were you guys saying before? I didn't even know how to get here. <laughs> you still don't. Used to the limo service. Man. Sorely here throwing it out in space. Tommy Stevens, again, who's a backup quarterback, but we've already seen catch a pass today. It's hit by Taylor Rapp for no gain. Tommy Stevens has really been featured so far early in this game. However, he hasn't seen a lot of balls come his way. Two receptions now. But he's been used mostly as a decoy when normally when he's in the game, they're getting him the football at all costs. Brandon Polk. Oh, he gets leveled at the 27 yard line. Taylor Rapp with another big hit. First team all Pac-12 free safety. Upending Polk. Tell you what, when you watch this Washington defense, they will hit you. And the guys that really stand out are those three safeties. JoJo McIntosh, Ezekiel Turner, and right there, Taylor Rapp coming up with a big contact play. Look at how things have changed since that penalty for a personal foul, roughing the passer, momentum completely shifting. Penn State trying to get it back here on third and long. McSorley finds Kosicki. Carries defenders to the 45-yard line. It's a big-time throw from Trace McSorley. Look at the zone coverage that Washington's trying to employ. He's got a corner right outside. He holds him up. That's a back shoulder throw on a ball that's over the middle. That is NFL accuracy, ladies and gentlemen. Outstanding ball by Trace McSorley to his big tight end for the first down. Well, you guys are right. I mean, look, Barkley gets most of the attention for good reason, but McSorley is one of the better players in the Big Ten and maybe the best quarterback. McSorley on target again, Jawan Johnson. It's a first down to the 35-yard line. What a bounce back by Penn State, thanks to some throws by McSorley. I think he's the Big Ten's Baker Mayfield. I really do. And not just because he's built like him, not because he throws like him, but because he plays like him. He's got that riverboat gambler attitude, Greg, where nothing bothers him. He's got a short memory, moves on to the next play, and his team, his team responds to his demeanor. The biggest thing about playing quarterback, do you make everyone around you better? Trace McSorley does that every time out. Another shovel pass deflected and nearly picked off it was. Now they're going to say it completed. Did hit the ground. And that's a pass. So it's a live ball and Burr curve and almost picked it off. I mean all the Washington players are saying that it's an interception but I thought it hit the ground. Let's see. Look at that thing hanging up in the air forever. Forever. Two guys go for it. And the Seavers couldn't get it, and ooh! ooh. <laughs> did now, he grab that field, between his hand and his thigh? Did Burt Kerbin? I mean, it can hit the ground as long as you control it. So it's going to be interesting, fellas. I mean, that was very, very close. So they're going to review it. 
We'll come back and let you know what the ruling is. 14-7 Penn State. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. When Mother Nature blitzes, you'll need the very best traction on and off the field. You'll need weather-ready, Goodyear more driven. Of course, Mother Nature is not allowed in the state of Arizona. <laughs> 75 degrees and sunny here in Glendale. And they confirmed, replay did, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Ball hit the ground, he'd never control it. Yeah, it was a good call by the officials. But, man, it was a lot closer than we initially thought when watching it live. So it's second and ten for Penn State at the Washington 35-yard line early on here in the second quarter. Mick Sorley airing it out, and it's underthrown. Caught inside the one-yard line by DeAndre Tompkins. First and goal, Nittany Lions. 34-yard pass by McSorley. That was great coverage on the outside by Austin Joyner, but the underthrown deep ball is so difficult to defend because the wide receiver can locate the football before the cornerback. He turns around and makes a great play on it to give Penn State a fresh set of downs inside the one. Sanders hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, but does not get in the end zone. Jared Pulu on the tackle, and there is a penalty marker down. Illegal substitution, 12 men on defense. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. So half the distance to the goal, not much, but they do get another four cracks at it here. Got to think they're going to go right back to that same play that that Barkley scored on earlier. It's the same formation. And into the end zone is Sanders for the Penn State touchdown. The heir apparent to Saquon Barkley. Only at 25 carries coming into this game. But with Barkley's role limited today because they don't want him to get hurt with this being his last college game more than likely. Sanders getting the bulk of the work. Second touchdown of the season. Sophomore from Pittsburgh the coaches really like. Don't think even though Barkley's great that there's a dramatic drop off. 21-7 Nittany Lions. Trace McSorley with a back shoulder throw to DeAndre Tompkins, setting up a one-yard score by Miles Sanders. Penn State back up two scores. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by Taco Bell, where you can experience the power of the dollar. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Northwestern Mutual, spend your life living. And IBM, you powered by data, knowledge, insight. That's you to the power of IBM. Special Olympics Arizona Fiesta Bowl Charities hosting a sports clinic. Washington players, and it's a really cool thing. This uh, went wild on, on the internet, on Twitter and everything with Josh Rasmussen here signing uh, with a young man. And again, Greg, you mentioned this earlier. It's one of the you know, great things for you guys when you come out and play in bowl games, an opportunity yeah. to interact with the community. Well, it's just so special, too, and it keeps things in perspective. And it also shows just how much these bowl games mean to their respective communities. The fact that we have 40 of them is incredible. I know people say it's too much. Yeah, but you don't get to see the interaction with the people of the town. You don't get to see what goes on in the week leading up. It's so special to be a part of and to spend time with your teammates and give back the way these teams were able to do these last few days. And running out of the end zone is Ahmed, and he's hit at the 15. Pinballs forward to the 20-yard line. Trace McSorley is dealing a hot hand here in the desert. Six for six on third downs as Penn State because of the accuracy by their quarterback extending against a three-man rush and finding Gusecki crossing over the middle and then a little bit later. How about this throw? Looking out in front of the intended receiver. Look at the ball placement, the back shoulder, knowing that there's about to be a collision. 
That is a big time throw from Trace McSorley, who is playing extremely well here today, Tom and has for the most part of the season. Yeah, I think last year when Chris Godwin departed, a lot of people felt like they weren't going to have that deep back shoulder ball, but Trace McSorley, it's about accuracy, not just the personnel. Browning on first down, dumps the pass off, and a lot of running room for Dante Pettis. Nobody over there for Penn State, and it's a 26-yard pass play. Little fake 35 stretch, quick screen right. All right, fantastic <laughs> stuff. Hitting Pettis and getting him out in open space. Taking advantage of some of those pressures that you will see from the Penn State defense. That is not looking real good after that catch. Walking a little gingerly. We'll keep an eye on whether or not he's a little banged up after the catch and run. Well, he hurt his ankle in the apple cup. Had some time to get healthy. Browning in trouble. Steps up here. Getting away from pressure. And throws incomplete a little behind the receiver, Aaron Fuller. One more game for you tonight on ESPN. Another New Year's Six game as number six Wisconsin takes on 10th ranked Miami in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Jonathan Taylor. When you think of all the great backs Wisconsin's had. Ron Dane, of course, won the Heisman. Melvin Gordon. Jonathan Taylor in that class. Two teams that kind of limped to the finish line after Wisconsin lost to Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. And Miami looked like a different team the last couple weeks of the season. Here's Gaskin on the run on second down. And down to the 49-yard line. Miles Gaskin, who is a junior, comes into this game needing 150 yards to pass Napoleon, Napoleon Kaufman for the school record. Pretty impressive. 1,300 yards his first two years and a great chance to get that three straight years. We did Washington game a little earlier in the season. I was just a little bit hot and cold with Miles Gaskin. Not these last few weeks. He's really turned it on, but struggling to get loose today against a very capable Penn State defense. In trouble here is Browning. Gaskin on the catch. Breaks a tackle and dumped short of the line to gain by Brandon Smith. So it's fourth down and four. You're down two scores here. You trying to pin him deep or do you go for it? Looks like they're running Disley out there. The tight end and the offense didn't even think about coming off the field. Their best field position since they had that trick play a little bit earlier. Here in the fourth and manageable. See what they dial up. Oh, it could be a quick putt now. That's what it looks like. And Browning puts it inside the 20 and takes several hops down to about the seven yard line. I know Washington, even though they're in the top 10 defensively, has struggled to stop Penn State, but that would have been quite the risk to go for it there. Welcome back to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. They passed Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville at University of Phoenix Stadium where Penn State is in command 21 7 over Washington. Taco Bell has brought the best of the regular season to the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl by creating the Live Moss student section. Today they're picking up the tab for student tickets from each school giving the biggest games back to the biggest fans. I was on a plane full of Penn State fans coming from Philadelphia here. I felt like I was in the student section. I had to make sure and look at my pass and make sure I wasn't heading to Vegas. They, well, they were having a heck white. of a good time. They were fired up. <laughs> that may be the next stop. It's not that long of a drive from uh, Glendale, only about four hours. McSorley running the ball gets about a yard brought down by Tevis Bartlett. Penn State has really spread the football around. Look at all the guys that have touched the ball today. Nine different players have touched the football so far for Penn State. That's a great job by new offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie having that much distribution and it's a testament too to the depth and quality of the skill players that the Nittany Lions have. Barkley off the left side. Here he goes. Look at the speed. Oh my goodness. Breaks a tackle. Going to take it to the house. 92 yards. Toying with the defender. Saquon Barkley.
probably his final game, but not the last time we'll see that kind of a run. I mean, that safety had an angle, yet he still had no shot. 28-7, <laughs> Penn State. Penn State bull record for the longest run, 92 yards by Saquon Barkley. Just a standard inside zone. You're going to see double teams working up, and you're going to see a lot of green grass and movement by this Penn State offensive line. And when you get Saquon Barkley into the second and third level with a full head of steam, good luck. Because he can turn on the Jets as well as anybody. Look at this. Untouched. All the way to the end zone and out running a safety. Talked to James Franklin yesterday. He said that when he shows up at the combine, he'll be 230 pounds. He'll jump 40 plus in the vertical. He'll run 4 3 in the 40. He might shatter every single record that the combine's seen for running backs. He is something special and on full display on that last run. Ahmed from the one. And they can't even get it to the 20 yard line. Some crazy numbers in this first half for Penn State. Offensively, McSorley already a buck 97 passing. Hamilton had the big catch on the first touchdown, and Barkley with that long run. What's the comparison, guys? You, you mentioned Barkley at 230 and the great speed and the leaping ability. You catch the ball out of the backfield, great returner. There's, you like? There isn't one. I mean, that, I actually reached out to an NFL running back coach, and he said he's more shifty side to side than Todd Gurley, but has that same type of top end speed. I had another NFL scout tell me he has not seen someone like him. He's that well built, he's that fast and explosive and strong. And Tom. I really believe this. I think he is the best college running back I've seen since I got into this business. And it hasn't been that yeah. long, right. but we've seen some good ones in recent years with Ezekiel Elliott and Leonard Fournette and some others. He is Marshall Falk with physical stature in the passing game, in the run game. And when you say he's 4-3, he's 4-3 in pads, not shirts and shorts. Amazing talent on display. And now Washington a big trouble down 21 points and that vaunted defense getting torched here today. Gaskin gets maybe a yard. Givens chases him down. Well, that's why you were saying in the open though that Penn State you think is the best team in the Big Ten. And, and look, in terms of when you have a guy like him, and they're very good on defense as well. I mean they're so well balanced. This is one of the reasons why there are a lot of people pushing for eight teams for a college football playoff because I think Penn State is a team outside the top four that could win a national championship. No doubt. I mean, they are elite at multiple positions and they're so well coached in an environment like this. Browning in trouble. Down he goes at the five yard line. Givens was there first for Penn State. Ohio State pounds SC last night. Washington getting handled here rather easily. The Pac-12 already one and seven in bowl games, which would be the worst record ever for a conference. Penn State's perfect on third down. Washington has it converted to third down, and they got 19 yards here to go from the six to move the chain. We're going to keep it on the ground with Coleman. Out to about the 12, and so Washington will have to punt again. Brandon Smith there for the tackle. Just can't say enough good things about what Washington has done all year, but they do not look anything like themselves, resembling more of the team that we saw against Arizona State, and that's a real testament to what Penn State's doing defensively. I mean, they haven't allowed any room outside of a trick play on a double pass and a quick screen in which they got caught in a blitz. There's been nothing going for this Washington offense. Tompkins is deep. 
And fair caught around the 40 yard line. Well, a lot of star players that know they're going to the NFL decide to sit out bowl games, not Saquon Barkley. In fact, James Franklin said his role will be limited, but if it was up to Barkley, he'd play the whole game. Penn State fans will miss seeing that, and so will James Franklin. 92 yard run by Barkley. Dave Pash alongside Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville here in Glendale, Penn State in command after Saquon Barkley's longest run in Fiesta Bowl history. 92 yard touchdowns. They lead by three scores and they got the ball back and I don't know how much more of Barkley will see. He's already been rotating with Miles Sanders who's in the game right now. And that Washington defense, which came in, think about it, they gave up 92 yards per game on the ground. They gave up 92 yards on one play. And a fumble. Washington needs that. And the Huskies have it at the 33-yard line. A huge turnover by Penn State. Ryan Bowman recovered it for the Huskies. And didn't appeared that Sanders even expected the ball there to be pitched to him. No, they went with that little triple option look where you have the quarterback as a run option. You have the speed option to the outside. Then you have some underneath players that you might give it to. And it looks like McSorley and Sanders clearly not on the same page. And James Franklin, regardless of what the score is, very upset with that lack of execution. Penn State second turnover they had an interception in the end zone and now Washington obviously has to capitalize here Browning looking downfield there are two Nittany Lions down there he threw the ball anyway and it almost got picked off by Marcus Allen but Shelley was the intended receiver that's just greed and frustration right there by Jake Browning trying to get it all back on one throw and had he been a little more accurate, that probably would have been intercepted, to be frank. You know what, Greg? Going back to the play call for Penn State, I, I think James Franklin has every right to be upset. You're running the ball down Washington's throat at the point of attack. Why take that risk with the football? Second and ten for Washington on the 33. Browning to the sideline. And Fuller pushed out. They don't have Dante Pettis right now. Again, he got hurt against Washington State with an ankle injury. Got healthy. We've seen him a little bit. We haven't seen him in his great punt return. He's got nine career punt returns for touchdowns, but Penn State hasn't punted. That's a huge loss, too, knowing just how beat up they've been at wide receiver all year. Chico McClatcher lost for the season against Colorado. Hunter Bryant might play today, but has been out since UCLA. Quentin Pounds, not to mention John Ross, who left for the NFL last year, this receiver core for Washington, not near 100%. I need somebody to step up here, though, in third down. It's Ahmed getting the first down. To the 22-yard line, a true freshman, Savan Ahmed, who I know you think would be a really good player. He's going to be really good, very explosive. Right now, he's they're trying to utilize him in a little bit more of a unique way as kind of a pass catcher. They'll motion him out of the backfield. You don't often see him in that traditional running back set. Mostly used as a jet sweep guy or something like that. But as he continues to grow and physically mature, he's going to be a good one for the Huskies. Got a big first down to the 22 with five and a half to go here in the first half. And Browning's pass caught along the sideline by Bocelli. Out at the 15, so that's a seven-yard gain. Picelli had that long pass to set up the only touchdown for Washington. Surprised, too, that we haven't seen a little bit more of that. That's been about the one thing that Washington's been able to consistently do in this ballgame, the quick passing game off a quick token play action. I think they need to continue to incorporate that because the run game so far for Washington has been absolutely beat at the point of attack almost every single time. Chris Peterson trying to call a timeout here. Again, they've got a new play caller with Jonathan Smith, the former offensive coordinator, now the head coach at Oregon State. They've hired Bush Hamden to be their offensive coordinator next year, but he is uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. He's their quarterback coach, so he's going to finish out the NFL year. So you get Matt Lubick calling plays today along with Peterson and Browning helping also. 
New Year's Day, 12.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. It's the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Undefeated UCF at 12-0, taking on Auburn at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Scott Frost going to coach the game and then go be the head man at Nebraska. What a year for the Knights. Incredible. Scott Frost so deserving of that Coach of the Year recognition. I think there was about nine different Coach of the Year awards. He took home about four of them. So that's a pretty good day. <laughs> and Scott Frost going home to Lincoln. I know Husker fans are fired up to see what he's going to put together. And what a contrast in styles, too, in that matchup between Auburn, who's so physical, so good at the point of attack, and just the speed, pure speed that you'll see from UCF. And I'll tell you, Greg, if you haven't seen Mackenzie Milton, check him out. Yeah, exactly. He's fun, man. He is. You're right. We mentioned Baker Mayfield earlier. Trace McSorley resembles the group of five. Baker, Baker Mayfield <laughs> a little bit. And Mackenzie yeah. Milton actually is the group of five Baker Mayfield. So a lot of love for the Heisman winner today on our broadcast. Second and four for Washington. They run Coleman, and he's short. Tackled by Jason Cabinda, second team All Big Ten linebacker. No, Greg, Dave, you know, Brent Pry, defensive coordinator, he's on the sideline down. I don't think we can give him enough credit for what he's done with this football team. Just two short years ago, this was a team that would take the field in the trenches and didn't look like they belonged. They didn't have numbers. Now they've got athletes. They've stuffed the run here today. It's been a remarkable performance. Can they get a stop here and force it? Washington have to make a decision on what to do on fourth down. Direct snap. Gaskin trying to find a hole. It's there. And he finds the end zone. Touchdown, Utah. That's number 20 on the season for Miles Gaskin. Off the turnover by Penn State. Gaskin had four touchdowns in his last game against Washington State. He now has 10 in his last three plus games. And that was big for the Huskies. And there were then 14 points now, 4.15 to go in the half. Just a little Wildcat power football. You're going to see pullers and blockers out in front. And watch the way Miles Gaskin makes number 47 right there miss at the point of attack he's so difficult to bring down early you can see number 47 Brandon Smith just over pursuing that power play Gaskin slipping right inside for the huge touchdown for Washington to stop the bleeding really the first positive run play they've had all day against a stout Penn State defense. Yeah, they're actually now in, in, in plus yardage. They were negative yardage rushing prior to that play. They now have four rushing yards after that 14-yard run for the touchdown. And Greg, when you look at Miles Gasson, the one thing about him is he may be short, but he's not small, and that's what makes it so difficult to tackle him upon first contact. He accelerates so quick, too, so he can stop his feet and put that back foot in the ground and go north and south so quickly. It's an impressive player. This kick angled beautifully to the eight-yard line. That's a live ball, and Sanders, remember, he just was responsible for a turnover, so that's a smart decision there. Kick it at him, and it landed perfectly and popped up in the air. Sanders able to cover it up. Let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by IBM. He's got two touchdowns already. He's barely been on the field, and he's got two scores. <laughs> yeah, he's making uh, those carries count. Averaging just under 20 yards per carry. Of course, a 92-yarder will do that. What's amazing, too, is that between the tackles, there hasn't been a ton of opportunity, but on the perimeter, they've had quite a, quite a bit of success. Saquon Barkley back in there again looking for more. I just know Penn State fans love the fact he's playing today. They get one more chance to watch him. All college football fans, other than if you're a Washington fan, enjoying watching Barkley and what will be his final game as he's taken down here after just a one-yard gain. Here's Vita Vea, who is the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. He's been quiet today, and just about everybody has in Washington's defense. He makes the hit there. He is enormous. Of course, he just jumps out by looking at the depth chart at six foot five, 
340 pounds, but he's so quick, too. The way he's able to move laterally and has a top-end speed that you don't often see from a guy that's flirting with 350. Yeah, 4'8", 40-yard dash. was a running back in high school. Here's Barkley. And look at him turn it up field. Nice tackle, though, by Bartlett to keep him from getting the first down and maybe more again. That was a great job right there, Greg, by Penn State up front in their offensive line. They single block big number 50, Vita Vea, at the point of attack uh, with number 74, Steven Gonzalez, and just good eyes and visions and patience there by Saquon Barkley. A huge third down right here, Tom, too, for this Washington defense. Let's keep an eye on Vita Vea, see if he causes some disruption if they try to run it. Well, they haven't stopped Penn State yet. The Nittany Lions six for six on third down. Watch the run to the left-hand side. Looks a little like the formation that they ran it out of earlier. And Barkley able to power past the marker. First down Penn State. They have all their timeouts. 2.49 remaining here in the half. That play's been good to them so far. Picking up a big first down right there and giving them two touchdowns. And they actually ran it right at Via Vea, which you don't often see. They said, hey, big number 50. Come and get some. And... Barkley's able to surge forward for a first down. Miles Sanders is in now at running back. From the Penn State 23. McSorley to the air. Pressure coming. McSorley being chased. And throws it away before he steps out of bounds. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights of all the bowl games. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. I'm telling you, that app is just the lifesaver. It's the greatest thing in the world, especially during bowl season. I feel like I haven't stopped watching it over the last few weeks, taking in as much college football as I possibly can. Of course, I am a millennial, so I do appreciate streaming things to my Here we go. handheld device. <laughs> of course, you guys always make fun of me for that. Well, once a game, you're going to mention it. So, <laughs> Play clock at one. They get the playoff. McSorley hit, and he still delivers a strike to Johnson. And Jawan Johnson's past the 40-yard line for an 18-yard pickup. Trace McSorley staring down the barrel of a loaded gun. Off play action. You can see O'Brien not recognizing that play action held up. Had he come full speed, he might have had a chance at it. But good job hanging in there and throwing a nice throw on the skinny post to his big target, Johnson. He was offered by Penn State as a safety originally, Trace McSorley. And then after they took a look at him a little bit longer, they said, you know, we do think this guy can be a quarterback. Sanders running the ball straight ahead. Now a gain of one. Penn but, State still with all of its timeouts and 90 seconds to go here. Greg, I thought it was interesting that James Franklin said, you know, Ricky Ronnie, our new offensive coordinator, he's evaluated every quarterback that we've recruited here. And even though we looked at Trace McSorley as a safety, it wasn't until we saw him throw in person that we decided to pull the trigger as a quarterback. And again, the evaluation always evolving at that position. This guy a winner, three state championships in high school here. There was a blitz coming, so he just had to get upfield for positive yardage. And let's see if Washington calls a timeout here with third down. No Clock is stopped. Trying to get confirmation here and who called the time. It's interesting Penn State actually called that timeout. Third down and nine. All right, uh, you know, Penn State, we talked about just how good they are offensively and how much fun Saquon Barkley is. But well, let's stay on the, the Trace McSorley train here because this is a guy that's going to come back next year. Barkley will be gone, but they have Miles Sanders. I mean, this is a team set up to, again, challenge not just for a Big Ten championship, but in the national championship picture again. No doubt. And you look at the way things are going to set up from a schedule standpoint, too. The road might be a little easier than it was this yeah. year, knowing some of the departures that you'll see from the Big Ten East foes that they'll face. But I look at McSorley, and I look at what they've done in putting him in a position to be successful. Yes, you can coach a guy up, but you can't teach intangibles. This guy just wins. He knows how to move in the pocket while keeping his eyes downfield. He's accurate, went in a traditional sense on a standard drop, and 
just has such great feel for the position. I said it earlier, and I really believe it. I think he's a top five quarterback in college football. Well, you mentioned the schedule. They got Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Michigan State all in state college next year. McSorley on the run. It's caught. Pushed out of bounds, so the clock stops and it's fourth down. And you would think Penn State will punt the ball here with a minute five to go. And that means Pettis, who has nine career punt returns for touchdowns, will get a shot. The most ever in college football. He's had four of them that have gone 76 yards or more. He had four punt returns for touchdowns this year. First team all Pac-12 is both a receiver and a punt returner. Now he's been a little banged up. Wasn't out there on offense on the last drive. Let's see if they even kick it anywhere near him. And Pettis lets that one go, and it's a perfect punt by Gillikin down to the five-yard line. Extra yard for teachers is the College Football Playoff Foundation's primary initiative. Its mission is to elevate the teaching profession by inspiring and empowering teachers. This season, teams, players, and coaches saluted teachers in their local communities by hosting and honoring them in stadium ceremonies, which will continue through all the New Year's Six Bowl games. For more, go to cfpfoundation.org. Thank you to all teachers. And I got to give a special shout out to my kindergarten teacher, Miss Joanne Rye, Palmelo Elementary in West Hills, California. She's always watching our games and she was a huge impact on my life at a young age. And another shout out to my family friend, Caroline Benoit, who's teaching in the Frisco School District in Dallas, Fort Worth. See how Washington handles this situation here. They're just gonna keep it on the ground after that great punt. Gaskin in trouble and down at the three yard line. Let's see if Penn State calls a timeout. Looks like they will to stop the clock with 44 seconds to go, and that will lead the Nittany Lions with one. So we talked about that schedule, though. they got to go to Michigan. They have to go to Pitt, but they have Wisconsin at home. Ohio, uh, Penn State does have Ohio State at home. They have Michigan State at home. And look, the Big Ten has looked really good so far in the postseason. No doubt. Chance to go 6-0 <laughs> and so far. And obviously, Ohio State had a case of the college football playoff with uh, the way they played in every game except at Iowa when they yeah. lost big. No, the Big Ten in the top to bottom right now is as good as any league in college football, if not the best. I, I know that they're maybe 1A or 1B because you look at the coaches and the players, especially along the line of scrimmage and even at the skill positions where the Big Ten hasn't always traditionally been elite is at the skill positions. Ohio State's always had elite players. Michigan's always had elite players, but now Penn State's going to be back. You have to think Nebraska here in the years to come is going to get better and better under Scott Frost. Wisconsin's going nowhere. Right. And this is a really good league top to bottom. And they have tremendous resources at their disposal. You'll see Wisconsin next in the Capital One Orange Bowl taking on Miami. Their only loss was against Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game. You said they're not going anywhere. Jonathan Taylor, just a true freshman, their best player. Gaskin on second and 11 out to the 12-yard line. Let's see if Penn State calls another timeout here in third down or not. There's about a three-second difference between the game and play clocks here, so Washington will have to run another play. A little surprised Penn State isn't stopping the clock here with a timeout. I am too. I, I thought they would. I mean, stay aggressive. They've had a chance to get a couple free rushers. They could have obviously gotten great field position. Surprised they're not going to burn a timeout here and... See if they can't get a big stop to give them one shot to steal some points before the half. And especially with Washington getting the ball coming out in the third quarter, fellas. No doubt. And with a little bit of momentum, too, after getting that takeaway and turning it into points. Browning in trouble. He's got to stay out of the end zone. There's a flag down here. And there's no time left in the half, but let's see what the penalty is. I think they're going to force Washington to run another play. That's a penalty on Washington with no time on the clock, and I'm thinking James Franklin will take that, right? we got to get in here because we got to have a line of sight. I don't, I don't think so. I, if it's a holding, 
front. Yeah, he's going to take it to the half. Why give Holy them another shot? Offense number 79. Penalties decline. Half's over. Penn State with 368 yards, the third most in a first half over the last 10 years by the Nittany Lions. Saquon Barkley, a 92-yard touchdown run. Only had six carries, and he had two scores. Check that, nine carries. Two scores, 140, 126 yards. McSorley threw for 220. Washington held 136 yards of total offense. Ran 16 fewer plays than Penn State. Let's go down now to the field for today's AT&T field pass. Coach, you've dominated this game on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Outside of the two turnovers, are you pleased so far with your team's effort? Yeah, I'm not happy for two reasons. Number one, we turned the ball over. We're one of the better turnover ratio teams in the country. We know that's one of the first ways to get you beat. So I'm not happy with that at all. And I'm not happy after the first touchdown, Trace McSorley punched me in the ribs, and they're killing me right now. All right, you going to go into the training room right now? Yes, sir. All right, yes, get in there, get help. <laughs> <laughs> in the ribs? Oh, man. And then also he's like, oh, wait, I got to do one more interview. <laughs> the training room will have to wait for the head coach. Got to be pleased about some things, though. They're up 28-14 at halftime. Welcome back to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. During halftime, both the Penn State Blue Band and the Washington Husky Marching Band perform the score from the PlayStation game, God of War. Nittany Lions up 28-14. As we get ready for the third quarter, back with Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville on the field. I'm Dave Pash, and Penn State on pace for 700 yards of total offense. Both Trace McSorley, the quarterback, and Saquon Barkley, the outstanding running back, own that first half, and that's our Capital One pivotal performance. Terrific performance by both guys in the backfield for Penn State. The third down efficiency for Trace McSorley has been off the charts. How about the throw to Deshaun Hamilton on third and long, hitting him inside on the slot fade for the first touchdown, and then how about Saquon Barkley? How many times have we seen this over the course of the last couple years? Safety had an angle on him, and he just ran away. All 5'11", 230 pounds, showing off that 4'2", 4'3", speed. Truly remarkable performance on display by both those Nittany Lion players. And Barkley only had nine carries. Uh, his role has been limited today because they don't want him to get hurt. Uh, at halftime, showing some leadership here, talking to his team, trying to encourage him as they get ready for the third quarter. Hey, new half. 0-0 zero, zero now. 0-0 zero, zero mentality. Three and out right away, D. Three and out right away. Get that mindset early. Barkley getting ready for what could be his, probably is his last half of college football. And again, James Franklin told us that Barkley wants to play every single play, but I don't want him to get hurt, so I'm going to limit his role, probably not going to return kicks, and we haven't seen him do that at all today. And he's been rotating with Miles Sanders and actually probably played about the same number of reps, even though Barkley had more carries than Sanders in that first half. Now Washington not done yet, though. They got a big turnover and then scored late in the first half, and now they get the ball to start the third quarter with Ahmed returning the kick from the goal line. And he's drilled at the 20-yard line. And before halftime, James Franklin told Tom Luganville this. And I'm not happy after the first touchdown. Trace McSorley punched me in the ribs, and they're killing me right now. <laughs> and here it was. It we is. believe we found it. <laughs> <laughs> A little forearm shiver right there to the ninth and 10th rib on the left-hand side. <laughs> He's got a little costochondritis, guys. I don't know if you know what that is. That's where the, the muscle from the rib connects to the breastbone and the sternum. Ah. Uh, he's ice and stemmed. Everything's good on his point. But with Washington, let's run this snap. I'll let you know what Chris Peterson had to say. And they run Miles Gaskin on first down, and he's dumped after a two-yard gain by Christian Campbell. Uh, Chris Peterson actually wasn't all that down coming out of the locker room. He just said, we're not playing good. He goes, we got to stay on the field on offense. Just sustain drives because our defense is wiped out right now because they've played the entire first half. Browning throws and a catch is made for a first down by Ty Jones, a true freshman. 
And whatever ailment that was, Tom, that you said that Chris Peterson has, I, I've been suffering from that working with you two all year. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Tom spell that ailment. There's no way he can spell that. you want me to do it right no, now? No, it's okay. We're okay. good. I well, believe you. Listen, well, it, no better place to do it than national television. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> They're pettis list, though, right now on offense at Washington. Yeah, yeah he was true. out there for that punt return at the end of the first half, but not much on offense today. Battling an injury. First down, Browning. Disley, who had that big catch on a trick play that led to the first Washington touchdown, gets seven yards here. And you're seeing a little tempo from Washington here starting the second half, trying to work that offense into a bit of a rhythm. Out in space, Fuller brought down short of the line to gain. So third down here with Washington starting on offense in the second half. Jake Browning, junior quarterback, was the Pac-12 Player of the Year last year. Finished sixth in Heisman voting last year. Then he had offseason surgery on his throwing shoulder. He played with that injury in the college football playoff against Alabama last year. He's had a solid year. And now he's leaving the backfield as a direct snap at the Gaskin who gets the first down. Marcus Allen stacks him up. I was going to say, though, Browning, a guy that... He's probably been as reliable as any player in college football because he just doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, and he's really been critical to them reaching these new heights over the last couple years. I mean, you think Washington's had a lot of success, but they're looking to win 11 games that they're victorious today. Back-to-back -to -back seasons for the first time in school history. I mean, he takes care of the football. He manages the game. And I know his numbers might not jump off the page like they did a year ago, but he's been very effective running this offense for a majority of the season. Well, the last time they won 10 games back-to-back -back seasons was 90-91. They shared a national title that second year. Coleman dropped at the 49-yard line by Brandon Smith. It's a four-yard run. Here's the tempo again. On second down, they're hustling to the line of scrimmage. Makes you think they're calling two plays in the huddle. Coming up ready to roll. And they're going to throw into that bunch set and blockers for Fuller. He gets the first down as he drags Grant Haley. You try to pick him up and drop him. And Washington is in Penn State territory now. Nice opening drive to the second half. You made the point when we were coming back into the booth. You said, I have a hard time believing Chris Peterson's just going to lay down and get blown out here. After they were down 28 7, they got a good plan coming out of the locker room. Coleman tripped up nicely by Grant Haley. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and what they're doing right now is they're trying to mix a little run pass, but they're getting the ball out of Jake Browning's hand quickly. This pass rush so far has been very effective for Penn State, and the offensive line for Washington has had a difficult time giving Jake Browning extended time in the pocket on straight drops. Let's see if they continue to work with some of that runs on the inside and quick passing game to the outside. Going to keep it on the ground on second and ten, and look at that push up front. Gaskin gashing him for about eight. Remember, they had four rushing yards at one point in the first half, and in the first quarter, they barely even had the football. They got nine plays already on this drive, and they're having success running the football, something they could not do in the first half. And that was a nice design on that last run. A bunch of pullers up inside. Gaskin making this third down much more manageable where he might get the direct snap here. Gaskin trying to find a hole. How about that block by Coleman? Coleman, who's a running back, was in there with Gaskin, and he just lit somebody up to open that running lane for Gaskin to get the first down. And this is exactly what Washington and Coach Chris Peterson was talking about. If not for anything else, keep the defense on the sideline. Dave, you just mentioned that was the 10th play now, I believe, of this drive. You're under 11 minutes. They had six offensive plays the entire first quarter when we kicked this game off. They have more rushing yards right now on this drive than they had the entire first half. On first down, Browning. And the pass is caught by Bocelli. Good coverage by Haley at the 28-yard line. Pickup of three. At that time, opting to go with a straight three-step drop out of the shotgun. A little bit more of a traditional drop back, which requires the offensive line to keep defenders in front of them. What was the result? Jake Browning ended up on his rear end. He got hit again, having a difficult time containing the pass rushers up front. So they need to make sure they keep them off balance with some of that quick passing game. Browning 
everybody covered here. He had time to throw and throws it away. Nice catch by the Nittany Lion. Went down to get that one. <laughs> Take him out. <laughs> there have been some injuries up front for Washington. That's part of the reason here. But look at the line. I mean, look at that. Go down and secure it. That's a catch, Dave Kataya, is it not? <laughs> Get our rules expert in here, he agrees. He agrees. That's he a said, catch. That's a catch. All the way. I think Absolutely. those gloves are illegal, Dave. You better check them out. <laughs> is he using stick them on the sideline? I Tom, think he's got confirm? honey on those paws. <laughs> stick them. That's back to the arena league. <laughs> Third and seven on the 28. Rolling with time going to the end zone. It's caught. Great touch by Jake Browning. He sees one on one with a lot of green grass down the middle of the field. You have a wide receiver against Jason Cabinda, who's a middle linebacker. A tremendous job recognizing a mismatch in coverage and delivering an accurate football. They were three for three on third down that drive. Remember, they didn't convert a third down for most of that first half. The biggest drive of the game so far results in a huge touchdown for the Huskies. Jake Browning dealing. Huskies down seven. You know, to sit here and say that, you know, we wish we were in the playoff. Yeah, we do. But, you know, we haven't won a big time bowl game since I've been here. And, and uh, so, you know, here's the opportunity right there to go win a big time bowl game and, and you know, try and take the next step as a program. And Washington is getting there with Chris Peterson and Jake Browning on that drive. As many completions as he had the entire first half. That was a great throw on the touchdown to Aaron Fuller. First touchdown of the season for Fuller. 19th passing for Browning. 78th for his career, which is a Washington record. And boy, it was 28-7. Penn State was rolling. They had the ball. They turned it over. And Huskies have scored the last 14 points. We have a ball game here in the desert. The Huskies will not go quietly into the night. See what Trace McSorley and company can do for an answer. Miles Sanders is deep with Barkley not returning kicks today. It's a touchback. Come out to the 25. There's a penalty marker back where they kicked off around the 35 yard line. Which usually means the kicking team is offside. So they add five yards to the end of the run if that's the case. Or the uh, offside kicking team number 26. Five yard penalty will be added to the touchback spot first down. The ball in the 30. I want to go back to this last touchdown. A little Tampa 2 coverage where you have safeties going deep. And they go with a switch release, freeing up Aaron Fuller on Jason Cabinda, who's the middle linebacker. Outstanding trajectory on the football, right up and over the defender. Not bad coverage by Cabinda. Just a better throw and catch and a well-timed play call. Saquon Barkley in the game. This is his 12th touch, his 10th carry, and he is bottled up after a gain of one by Vita Vea. Greg Gaines in there as well. Those guys were quiet in the first quarter, but an entire Washington defense much better lately. Yeah, this is a defense that came in number six and points a lot at number one in rush defense in the country. They had one scrimmage play all year allowed of more than 40 yards. They had two of them in the first half, including a 92-yard run by Barkley. McSorley, he's got running room, a lot of green in front of him. Got the first down and into Washington territory before he easily steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line. You're going to see a lot of movement up front by Washington's defense. Look at all the games moving around, loops, and there's nobody home. Trace McSorley, a very good runner. With a lot of green grass out in front, good job recognizing the disappearance and making a big play happen with his legs. 
He got 26 yards. Now he puts the ball on the ground here on a snap that appeared to be a little bit low from Connor McGovern. McSorley does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Ryan Bowman, who has a fumble recovery in this game. To turn the tide of the first half. So far early in this second half, this defense going with a little bit more pressure than they showed in the first. Here's Barkley out in space. And ran out of room on that far sideline. That was a good job defensively. Keeping Barkley in front of them. Short game brings up third and long for Penn State midway through the third. Greg, I'll tell you, th this Washington defense will take Penn State going laterally all day long. They'll run them right out of bounds, just like they did right there. No doubt, Tom. This could be, if you get a good game here, Penn State, this could potentially be four down territory if they're just short. Pete Kutkowski, the Washington defensive coordinator. Let's see what they dial up here at third down and seven. McSorley over the middle. It's caught a first down. Jawan Johnson to the 30-yard line. Defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski decided to bring some pressure right there, which allowed Johnson some free space underneath where he just hooks up right at the sticks and falls forward for a first down. McSorley's been perfect on third down, seven of seven passing. Barkley breaks a tackle and finally brought down at the 25. And Jojo McIntosh didn't want to get off him. He's saying that finally <laughs> get him down to the ground. I'm not going to let go even when the play's over. That was a good play. Looked like if he could have escaped that tackle, there might have been a little bit more room to pick up some additional yardage. A good tackle, like you said, by McIntosh. McSorley keeps it on second and five. Tried to cut it back. And was tackled after a gain of one by Vita Vea. Third down and four for Penn State. You're not going to escape the grasp of Vita Vea, that's for sure. Here you go, third and three and a half. The rate of nine and third down, this has been the difference in the game. Third down conversions for them. They've been great so far, but they can absolutely run it here in this formation, too. Seeing that they could have numbers to the right hand side. That's where Barkley is lining up to the right of McSorley here. Washington bringing pressure. McSorley to throw. Going to take a shot. Receiver is there. Ball is caught. Touchdown, Deshaun Hamilton. Second touchdown of the day for Hamilton. Great response by Penn State. Eight play, 70 yard drive. McSorley now with two touchdown passes on the day, 28 for the season, one shy of the school record, which he set last year. And he hits Deshaun Hamilton for the second time. Hamilton playing his final game as a member of the Nittany Lions, the all-time leader in catches at Penn State. That's a big one with momentum in Washington's favor. And McSorley and company back up two scores here in Glendale. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, brought to you by AT&T. The all-new Accord from Honda. Allstate, official protector of college football fans. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Captain Coyote Shane Doan, the now retired former 
Phoenix Coyote star spent all 21 years with this organization and the Grand Marshal of the Fiesta Bowl Parade. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, committed to honoring blimpworthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Beautiful day outside, 75 degree weather here in Glendale. A lot of fireworks inside. I don't know if many expected this high scoring a game. Six minutes to go in the third, 35 21 Penn State. First Fiesta Bowl appearance for Washington. Seventh for Penn State. The Nittany Lions are 6 0 in this game. The best unbeaten record by any school in a single bowl game. Won the national title in the Fiesta Bowl in 87. Last time they were in this game, though, was 1997. And on the deep kickoff, it's a touchback, and Washington will have the ball, and it's 25, and we come back. Welcome back to Phoenix. Here's Deshaun Hamilton's last touchdown. You're going to see him release just inside and understanding where he needs to get on this slot fade. He scored on this exact same play earlier in the game. The defender recognized it, so he stayed heavy outside leverage. Hamilton said, no worries. I'll release inside. I'll just get to my landmark and climb up and make a tremendous catch. Two touchdowns on the day for Hamilton. Second team all Big Ten performer recruited initially by Bill O'Brien. Playing his final game at Penn State. He's got the school record for catches including three today and two scores. Washington takes over down 14. Play action for Browning. And over the middle. Game for about six yards. Well I know Deshaun talked all week about how excited he was for his older brother Darius to make the trip from Virginia. Darius is autistic. All the communication with Darius is nonverbal. And Deshaun has had to be basically a caregiver for many years. Uh, his mom battled breast cancer when he was in the first grade. He had to take over a lot of the caregiving duties. And he and his brother are extremely close. And for the family to be able to make it all the way from Virginia to this and to watch this performance by Deshaun has to be rewarding. On second down, Gaskin tackled short of the line of scrimmage. Third down coming up. Deshaun Hamilton, such a special young man, has a very bright future. As he transitions to the NFL, he's going to carve out a nice niche for himself as a slot receiver at the professional level. And here, the Penn State defense trying to get that offense of theirs back on the field. Last drive for Washington was outstanding on third down. Let's see if they can continue some of that offensive momentum. Browning in trouble. Gets away and then he's tripped up and sacked. Sharif Miller. Who did not start the game for disciplinary reasons. Gets his fifth sack of the season and forces a punt. Sharif Miller coming off the right hand side just sticking with it not there initially of course Browning has to escape the pocket Miller dies selling out and making that play it's a good job of corralling by Miller he knew that Browning was trying to escape to the outside so he stayed outside leverage and was rewarded with the sack and Tompkins who muffed a punt of the first half had a little trouble with that one as he saluted. He didn't even just a fair catch. They actually saluted to the sky as he pulled that one in. Sack time for Penn State, and they get the ball back. Celebrating its 11th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville at the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Penn State playing in this stadium for the first time, but not in this game for the first time. It's their seventh Fiesta Bowl, and they have a two-touchdown lead as McSorley throws it here out in space. And a nice job by Stevens to elude a would-be tackler and get about three yards. McSorley's been great through the air. Barkley on the ground and Hamilton. A couple of big touchdowns. Outstanding three-headed monster both on the ground and through the air. What's amazing is not listed 
so many other incredible players like Gasicki and Jawan Johnson all have been very involved in this plan by Ricky Ronnie. McSorley, Gasicki able to hang on to it and get the first down. Ricky Ronnie, the new offensive coordinator, taking over for Joe Moorhead, who's now the head coach at Mississippi State. What a job he's done involving so many different playmakers, making sure that they all get looks, they all get touches, and distributing the ball evenly throughout the game is so difficult to defend. Even against some of the best defenses, stopping this much talent is extremely difficult. McSorley steps up. Off the fingertips of Gasicki, incomplete. Think about how, you know, this offense here in the last couple of years, what's happened. You know, two years ago in the bowl game, the Tax Slayer Bowl, John Donovan is fired, so Ricky Ronnie ends up calling plays. And then Joe Moorhead steps in as the offensive coordinator, and then he gets the head job, and now Ronnie is back calling plays today. And going forward for this offense, which will have its quarterback back next year and a lot more weapons around him. Well, obviously lose Barkley, but... The guy in the backfield right now with McSorley is pretty good, Miles Sanders. Here's Hamilton again, and look at all that space. Another first down. Into Washington territory, 15-yard pick up to the 45. This offense is so difficult to defend because they build in answers. Right there, that's a run play. But they use the RPO element, and they throw the bubble screen. There's nothing but green grass out in front. Then you have sweeps and nakeds and boots and downfield RPOs and deep play actions with extra protection. It's a simple scheme, but it's so difficult to defend. McSorley running it here. Burkirvin brings him down after a gain of a couple. You know what, Greg, though? It's the quarterback that makes it go. Because if you have a stationary player in this offense, you have nowhere near the versatility or the dynamics of forcing the defense to have to account for the quarterback's legs. And I think that's where Trace McSorley, we see all these components, the ball's on the perimeter, ball's on the ground, uh, the ball's to Tommy Stevens there, another quarterback, but it's McSorley that's the X factor in this offense. There's no doubt, Tom. He operates it at such a high level, too. On second and eight, McSorley going to work again, stepping up, batted away. Almost intercepted, but incomplete. The area had a chance on the tipped ball by Murphy to get the pick. Could not hang on. Sorley throwing his back up into a blow up there. One of the few bad decisions that he's made today. Almost intercepted. Fortunate for Penn State that that ball hit the turf and it wasn't out the gate the other way. Look at the third down conversions. Nine of ten. This is third and eight, though, at the 43. McSorley with time to throw, an on-target pass again. That's been the go-to guy on third down. Jawan Johnson with another first down catch. The first progression in this route is actually Gasicki. But he sees the defender drop right underneath it. He knows that he has a comeback to the outside. He throws it with perfect anticipation in a great location on the sideline. Almost uncoverable if you throw that comeback on time. Think about it, Greg. He's been targeted six times, and he's got six catches. Jawan Johnson had that game winner at Iowa. His only touchdown of the year came as time expired in that huge win for the Nittany Lions earlier in the year. Nice cut by Miles Sanders. And it gets chopped down at the 31. Tackled by Bryant. Three yard pickup, second down and seven. We're watching this game and it's, you're watching it as though Washington's just an average unit on defense. That's not the case. I, I know that this offense is incredibly talented and they have explosive weapons all over the place. But to see them operate at this level against a defense of this caliber, Man, I don't think the word impressive does it justice. Here is a fake to Barkley. And now the quarterback, McSorley, going to keep it. Dive. He'll be short. Tackled by Gaines. We'll see what they do for it on fourth down. That was an interesting play there. They had Barkley lined up in the slot. They had Tommy Stevens lined up to the right. He had two running backs and two quarterbacks in on that play. 
Third bit down of, and two here, excuse me, third down and two. Yeah, gadget play right there, faking reverses, faking quick bubble routes to the outside. Setting up a third and manageable, though, after the quarterback scramble. They don't have to snap it here. And Penn State will take a 14-point lead to the fourth quarter. Fifteen minutes away from win number 11 for the Nittany Lions. Washington got within seven, but Penn State with a big response and a critical third down when we come back. Both quarterbacks have made some impressive throws. It's a 14-point lead for Penn State after three. It's football playoff rankings brought to you by AT&T. Alabama beating out Ohio State for that fourth and final spot. The Buckeyes won the Cotton Bowl last night over USC. And New Year's Day, the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. So it's Oklahoma, Georgia, and Northwestern uh, Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Five Eastern, two Pacific in Pasadena. Top-ranked Clemson, number four Alabama, the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Right in the first half, you were with me. You said, Georgia, Bama, you changing again, or are you going to stick with that? Yeah, I'll go Oklahoma, Clemson now. That way I'm covering all my bases. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Big third down here for Penn State. Third and two, the two-touchdown lead. Direct snap to Barkley. Barkley, head of the backfield. A huge play at the 31-yard line by Ryan Bowman. So now you're fourth and five. Be about a 48-yard field goal try from here. Your kicker, Tyler Davis. Now he's made a 47-yarder, but he has not had a good year in terms of accuracy. But the offense is staying on the field. You agree with this decision, guys? I agree with this decision. I do. And I think right here, Go find your big safety net, Mike Gesicki, who's located at the top of the screen. See if they can get him in some open space against zone coverage. And they release him down the field, stepping up McSorley, and throws to Barkley. Leaps in, is out of bounds. Where will they spot it? And they give him the first down. He went airborne and picked up an extra few yards and moved the chains. Got to love the fact that this guy doesn't have to play. He could just sit out. He's not even playing his full number of reps, but he's selling out for his team. We've seen him go airborne several times in this game. Leave no doubt. It's the best back we've seen in college football in a while. He really is. What a special young man. So first down of the 23. Here's Barkley again, that pass a little behind him. Look at the speed as he turns up field, breaks a tackle, reverses field, and finally brought down at the 19, a gain of four. You know, some would say, well, if you're James Franklin, why, why play him at all? Why not just sit him like some other players have, have done? And, and Franklin told us yesterday, look, he, the kid wants to play every play. I'm just trying to help him out. I know he can get hurt on any play, but he wants to play. We're going to let him play, but he's not going to have his normal role. Yeah, and he's selling out. He really is. He might not have as big a role as usual, but he's making that role count every single time he touches the football. Play action. McSorley pass batted in the air. Free ball. It's picked off by Austin Joyner. Much needed takeaway for the Husky defense. Burke Kerbin either tipped it or it hit his helmet. And caught out of the air by Joyner. This is a gotta have it situation for Washington's defense. And do they step up bigger than ever? A huge turn of events as the ball hits Burke Kerbin's helmet. Right into the hands of Austin Joyner. The Huskies have life in the desert. Let's take a look at Greatness Awaits presented by PlayStation. Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual with Oklahoma and Georgia. New Year's Day followed by Clemson, Alabama 3, although this is in the semifinal. They met in the previous two national championship games. And then coming up our, after our game from Miami, the Capital One Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes arriving. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, it's a home game. Well, it's really not, because you know how <laughs> Wisconsin travels. It'll probably be half and half, maybe even more Badger fans than Hurricane fans. Yeah, I think the Badgers will be well represented 
in South Florida, that's for sure. And some fans of both schools here in attendance as Washington takes over after a turnover. Play action and a reverse. A lot of running room here for Bocelli. Oh, violent tackle by Marcus Allen after a nine-yard gain. That running room closed in a hurry because of Marcus Allen. You see the trophy. Tom, go over there and grab that real quick. I'm busy, brother. <laughs> I'm working for you. There you go. I think it's important, guys. Uh, Washington continues to have a mix of run pass, run pass balance. They can't get pass happy here. And again, no Dante Pettis. He's been limited because of injury today. And immediately on the handoff, Simmons is in the backfield, and he swallows Gaskin. Loss of about four. They just lost him off the edge. I mean, he's untouched. And there is nobody home on that left-hand side. He's swallowed up in the backfield before he can get any type of momentum. And what was a terrific first down play, second down became a real problem. And this is really a gotta-have-it situation for Washington's offense. Still a two-score game. Let's see who they try to target here on the critical third and manageable. Browning has to adjust the arm position, and he hits Ahmed for a first down. There was pressure. He had to go low and sidearm that baby. And able to move the chains. Look at this arm. <laughs> Little sidearm sling right there, and a good job by Ahmed, too. Not the most accurate throw, but making sure he looks it all the way into his stomach and getting north and south, knowing the line to gain. He's going to be a special one for the Huskies for many, many years. Jake threw that from his knee. Yeah. Almost underhanded it. Pressure coming up the middle. Browning climbing the pocket, and he overthrew Gaskin, who was wide open at midfield. Oh, man. There are so many plays over the course of a game that you would just love said keep running to have back but I know he's upset keep running keep running that ball was way too high intended for a running back that's not the longest wide receiver on the field Brownie's got to take some responsibility there on an inaccurate throw pressure coming again second down Coleman or uh, Ahmed rather did a good job to get back to the line of scrimmage and actually get a yard they're in third and long though Shane Simmons made a couple of plays here remember he had that Personal foul roughing the passer call that kept the Washington drive alive when Washington was down 14 nothing. that allowed the Huskies to get some momentum. They eventually scored on that drive. Third nine for Washington here. Pretty good numbers on third down for Browning. Got to get to the 41. Browning in trouble, Kabinda chasing, and Browning throws it short, incomplete. A lot of time left, got to punt, right? You have to punt it. This part of the field, absolutely have to send your special teams unit on. Don't disagree with this call at all. Browning's got to understand to a certain extent. You've seen him do it time and time again this year. He's got to hang in the pocket a little bit. I feel like he's seeing ghosts, and he's gotten hit several times today, been sacked multiple times as well. He's got to hang in there and let some of these route progressions develop because he's escaping the pocket so quick and Penn State's teeing off. Excellent punt and a dangerous play again. Tompkins who muffed a punt earlier breaks a tackle and up to the 34. Vita Vea put the tackle on special teams. The biggest guy in the field down there. Wow. A 350 pound guy <laughs> in punt coverage making a tackle against a wide receiver. Are you kidding me? Vita Vea. What a play. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl brought to you by PlayStation 4. Greatness awaits. Taco Bell, official partner of the student section. Sometimes you got to live mas. And the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, watching over the hard work and determination of blimpworthy athletes for over 60 years. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale with the roof closed, the air conditioning on. It's in the mid-70s outside here in Glendale. This Penn State offense been on fire, 367 yards in the first half, right now at 491. So if they get positive yardage here at any point, uh, it will be the most yards they've ever had in a bowl game. Right now they're tied with the 1975 team, 491 yards in the Cotton Bowl. They got a two touchdown lead. You would imagine they'll start to milk the clock here, and Saquon Barkley, the perfect guy to do that, he picks up about two or three there. So a record now for Penn State for total offense in a bowl game. And that just again speaks to how far this program has come. Our crew covered. Penn State during the, the Sandusky scandal the week that Joe Paterno was relieved of his duties in the Bill O'Brien's first game as head coach. He got the program back on solid footing before leaving for the Houston Texans. And, you know, a lot of Penn State alum weren't sure about the James Franklin hire at the time and then after the first two years where they were hovering around 500. But the last two years, he's proven he's the right guy for this job and he's got them back at a championship caliber level. Won the Big Ten a year ago. They defend Barkley well that time. He loses yardage and steps out of bounds, so it's third down and long. Just looking at the Big Ten in general, I mean, and this is in large part due to the resurgence of Penn State, obviously, who is in control of this game. But what a performance so far in the early going by the Big Ten. And you can see just leaving everybody in their dust right now. What a year for that league, and it's only getting stronger. That's what's fun about it. And you saw at the bottom the Pac-12, 1-7, which would be the worst record ever for a conference in a bowl season. Huskies need to stop here with the clock at 8.56 and counting with third and 10. McSorley dumping it off to Barkley. And Barkley dropped at the 39-yard line by Joyner, so the Huskies able to force a punt. No, one thing too, guys, with this Penn State program that cannot be understated is the roster management that James Franklin and his staff have put together when they knew exactly where they were going to be with their scholarship reductions, where did they ne then need to apply those scholarships, and how did they build this thing back up? And even if you ask James Franklin now, he'll tell you that, that there's still work to be done in the trenches, up front on offense, up front on defense. But when he arrived here, they had one or two players in the offensive line on scholarship, fellas. Pettis, who has not played a lot of offense today, signals for the fair catch, and Washington will have the ball at its 21, down 14, just outside eight minutes left. Tonight, one more game on ESPN. It is the Capital One Orange Bowl featuring Jonathan Taylor and Wisconsin, Malik Rozier and Miami. It's available on ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. There are worse places to be on a Saturday at the end of December than Arizona and Miami, the site of uh, the two New Year's Six games today. Rozier getting ready for the Canes, who looked dangerously for a while and then eventually caught up to him, lost a couple games late. See if they can bounce back tonight. He's going to have his hands full against a very good Wisconsin defense. Washington with possession from its 22-yard line, trailing by 14 points. Eight minutes to go. Browning brought down for a sack. Yitor Gross Matos, a true freshman, who they think is going to be a player. Yeah, they're excited about him. When you just look at this defensive line unit, a couple years ago, I was on campus in 2014, they did not have guys that were that big and that active. Yitor Gross Matos. Look how long he is. He's 6'5". He's I mean, he is a good-looking dude, and he is going to be a really good player here for the Penn State program in the years to come. Two-yard loss, Browning on second and 12, long throw. It's there and caught by Ty Jones. And they will mark him about a yard short of the first down. A huge play right here for Washington, obviously. Still plenty of time, no need to be in a rush, and they're taking their time, obviously, knowing how critical this down and distance is. And their most reliable pass catcher, Pettis. Still on the sideline, a little banged up. Haven't seen him hardly at all on offense these last few series. 
So it's going to be a direct snap. That's Browning, the quarterback, leaving the backfield. Gaskin kind of looked at him, and it takes off, and Gaskin might go the distance. Washington is back in the game. Touchdown, Husky. Like a point guard, he froze the defense. Gaskin saying, I know Barkley's probably a top five pick, but you know what? I've had some pretty darn good numbers, too. 1,300 yards, three straight years, 21 rushing touchdowns, including two today in 2017. The extra point sneaks inside that left upright, and that drive lasted less than a minute because of Gaskin's touchdown run. Miles Gaskin out of the Wildcat. It's been their most productive run play of the day. He breaks free to green grass. And the Huskies have life in the desert. Welcome back to the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, where Washington is back within seven of Penn State. It's a one-score game because of an incredible quarterback power out of the Wildcat. Miles Gaskin standing about six yards deep. And look at this cutback. Boom. And then he hits the Jets. And he is gone. What a great design. They've had such success with that play today. They scored on it earlier from about 12 to 15 yards out. That time he hits his head on the goalpost for a huge game-changing play. Think about it, Gaskin at 13 carries for about 30 yards, and then he goes for 69 on that play. The longest run of the season for Washington. Fielded on the 10-yard line by Sanders. And out to the 25. By the way, Saquon Barkley has had quite a day as well, running for 128 yards of two scores. He's also been active in the pass game, too, converting several third down opportunities but man you see that quick twitch ability coupled with the power and the body control and then the Jets right here just out the gate a safety McIntosh had an angle he just ran away from him and hurtled into the end zone Saquon Barkley in what could be his final game for Penn State has been sensational well, the Washington fans are back Loud again with Penn State in possession. One score game, and they're going to run McSorley here, and he's dropped after a gain of two. Vita Vea has really stepped up here, called his name a lot since the first quarter. So a gain of two on the play. And it's on the big guys up front. Vita Vea. Jalen Johnson. And when Greg Gaines, big number 99 when he's in there. And Bartlett, 17. Those guys got to play huge along with the linebackers, because you know Penn State is likely going to try to keep it on the ground to milk some of this clock. There's a lot of time left, six minutes left, so how come you don't just run your offense? It's a one-score one game. Shovel pass, Gasicki, well defended by Washington. Otawahi was there first, now it's third down and long. I get that was a high percentage play, but that's a run play. I mean, that's a that's a yeah. underneath same thing is similar to a zone read type of play so that's albeit a pass and a completion that's a run very high percentage but here you have to throw it this is an important third down for Penn State because Washington has all the momentum and they've been outstanding through the air on third down all day today McSorley hasn't missed on third down 10 of 10 keep an eye on Hamilton McSorley moving around, and look who he finds. Jawan Johnson, who's been targeted now seven times, has caught all seven passes, many of which have come on third down as they move the chains to the 40. Great job by Trace McSorley. Feeling that pressure, escaping, and finding the awaiting target. Johnson, the big body. At the yard to gain, huge conversion by their quarterback, who's been muddy in critical down and distance today. Now maybe they 
run the ball here on first and second down because you got the clock inside five minutes. They are going to throw it. McSorley stepping up. Goes to Barkley another high percentage throw. He stays inbounds to keep that clock moving in a game of about five. How smart was that, guys? And again, Trace McSorley's ability to move around. Look at this in the pocket. Finds out where he's got to be and then quickly knows where his outlet is. Oh, by the way, to the best player on the field. Yeah, and like you said, how aware of Saquon Barkley to get stay in bounds McSorley has been so efficient today has had a few mistakes and turnovers but continues with that gunslinging mentality Barkley trying to bust it to the outside and it's taken down as he went high in the air helicoptering again we've seen that several times Austin Joyner on the tackle now it's third down and again James Franklin told us look he's going to rotate series he's not going to play as much as he normally would but he's been out here a ton in the fourth quarter with the game at stake and what will likely be his final game at Penn State and he's converted on critical down and distance I would expect him to get the ball again right here running to the right hand side with a clock at 340 it is Barkley and he gets the first down powering into Washington territory he'll stop the clock to move the chains and then Start that clock running again. The area came out of there with the ball and had it swatted away by Ryan Bates. Barkley right there, by the way, he's going off the field. As he's going off the field, he lifted up one finger, said, I'm coming out for one play. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what he meant. As you see now, Miles Sanders in the game at running back. We'll see if 26 is back out there in a second. They're going to take the play clock down here. You would imagine inside of five before snapping it. Washington may have to start thinking about using a timeout. Sanders stood up after a gain of one. Washington will use a timeout with 3.02 on the clock. That will leave the Huskies with two. Second down and eight. Two timeouts remaining for Washington. And you know, regardless of what happens here uh, in you know, the final few minutes for Washington, the future definitely is, is bright. This yeah. has been two back-to-back -back impressive seasons, making the college football playoff last year and then uh, the run to the Fiesta Bowl this year. But clearly Chris Peterson has this going in the right direction. Has a lot of players coming back. There's no denying that. And think about the adversity they've had to overcome this year with injuries and departures. They lose their left tackle. They lose three of their top four pass catchers. They've lost several players in the secondary. This team is not the deepest unit in college football, but they've hung in there. I do think the best is yet to come. For Washington, Chris Peterson is universally respected with the way he recruits and targets players that fit what he wants to do. I'm excited to see this program continue to grow and carve out what could be a little Northwestern dynasty in the Pacific Northwest. On second down and long, Barkley running here on backwards. Trying to stay in bounds, but went out at the 45 yard line. 2.53 on the clock. So Washington doesn't have to spend a time out here. One remaining, third down. How do you handle this if you're Penn State? I'd run it. I mean, knowing right now the situation and the clock starting once again on the wind, I'd run it though. Keep that clock moving in. By the way, you're giving it to the best player on the field in Saquon Barkley. McSorley, though, on third down, 11 of 11 passing for two touchdowns. Washington stacks the box. Here they come. McSorley climbing the pocket, and he throws complete. It's Deshaun Hamilton who has two touchdown catches with a huge conversion here. Unbelievable. I mean, just stay aggressive. Most teams are running it in this situation. Play conservative, maybe punt. Not Penn State, not offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie calling plays for the first time as the offensive coordinator. McSorley steps up and continues his hot streak on third down. And Penn State, you would think, won't snap it till inside five, about a minute 45 in the game clock. Washington, only two timeouts remaining. There's Ricky Ronnie, the 
Replacement for Joe Moorhead who left to be the head coach at Mississippi State. Sanders gets the carry. Down to the 29 yard line. Three yard gain. Washington will call a timeout. That will leave the Huskies with one. So now they're in a situation where Penn State gets another first down. The game's probably over. Some of the confidence, guys, of Ricky Ronnie and Trace McSorley, of all places to throw the ball on that down, you throw in the middle of the field. I know. And the ball placement, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, a dangerous throw. Yeah. I mean, and, and really in a, in a situation when you can just kind of milk it because it's a two or because it's a possession game and you can pin them back when your defense has played well. Just so aggressive. And, and it's been fun to watch this unit operate today. New Year's Day, more college football, bowl appetizers for you leading into the college football playoff at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Jim Harbaugh in Michigan against South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. And at one on ABC, 14th ranked Notre Dame, number 17 LSU in the Citrus Bowl. Ohio State won the first New Year's Six game last night, thumping USC. Penn State, minute 38 away from win number 11 this season. And a perfect 7-0 record in the Fiesta Bowl. No one's ever done that before in any bowl game. Put a punctuation mark on a terrific season and set the table for next year. Sanders about two yards short of the first down, so that's the final timeout taken by Washington. So if Penn State gets the first down here, they can just take a knee for a couple plays and end the game. Washington gets a stop, then it's a decision for Penn State whether to go for it on fourth down, try field goal. Stay tuned, we'll wrap up our PlayStation Fiesta Bowl coverage in the Ford Escape postgame show. Highlights and analysis and the trophy presentation. Trace McSorley's thrown for 344 yards in this game. Two touchdowns, he did have the two picks, although one of them was just a great play in the back of the end zone by... Byron Murphy. The other was on a deflection. Uh, last time uh, towards the end of the third quarter when Penn State was in the red zone. Yeah, he had the ill-advised pitch, too, on the speed option when the running back wasn't prepared for it that resulted in the turnover as well. So, yeah, three turnovers to his name, and that's never what you want, obviously, but that's kind of the moxie of Trace McSorley. Bad play happens, who cares? Yeah, he forgets about it. Moves Doesn't on. matter. Yep. Move on. And that's all you can do because every time he's made a mistake, he's come back by making five incredible plays. Highlighted by some of his production on third down. He has been outstanding today and is a huge reason why Penn State has been so incredible these last couple years. Let's see if they just keep it on the ground here. They got Saquon Barkley in the game. A first down probably wins the game. Third down and about three. And it is Barkley. And he's close. They're going to mark him short. So this will take the clock down to about 50 seconds left. Penn State can use a timeout if it chooses. It's fourth down. I mean, do you, you probably don't want to try a field goal, right? You I mean, go for it's it. It's not, not worth it. So Yeah, you go for it. If anybody knows that, it's Penn State. Remember when they blocked a field goal? And took it to the house to beat Ohio State yeah. last year. Yeah. Bad things happen when you send the field goal unit on. You go for it. You try to win it on the field right now. And your offense has been outstanding for a majority of the day. And your running back, by the way, is a monster. Well, Tyler Davis has had two block this year, too. So, obviously, they're going to go for it on fourth down. And when you've got that guy right there, probably a good idea just to give it to him. So... Going to take us actually inside 40 seconds, and then Penn State will call a timeout. Tonight, after the Capital One Orange Bowl on ESPN, stay with us for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Steph Curry is back with the Warriors. And how does he look in his return? The Warriors lost at home last night. Update on Baker Mayfield actually. I was watching the press conferences and coach and teammates were talking about him being sick. He said, you know, I'm going to go actually take part in the press conference on my own. Also, where in the world isn't SVP the best viewer fake SVPs of 2017? <laughs> and James Franklin's got the entire team around him here for fourth down and one. Again, they get the first down. Game's over. They're going to win the game. If Washington gets a stop, they don't have any timeouts and they have to go about 78 yards. And about... 30 seconds or so. 
Saquon Barkley probably going to get his final collegiate carry, you would imagine, right here. Although that's what Washington's thinking, so maybe James Franklin will do something different. I don't know. You got that two-headed monster back there, Greg, between McSorley and Barkley. You don't have bad options if you're Ricky Ronnie here. No doubt. Either guy carrying it is a very effective option, especially knowing the movement they've been able to consistently get up front against what is a very stout Washington front four. And there's some movement by Penn State. Wow. Now it's fourth and six. I think they still go for it, though, right? False start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Brandon Mann, the right guard. He's still got to go for it here in this situation. And what a massive penalty. You see the Washington defensive line shift, and which causes him to fl flinch just a little bit. Right there, you see, as those defensive linemen pick up, we actually called that Harry High School, uh, but <laughs> effective nonetheless, and looks like now James Franklin has a big decision on his... Well, the kicking team just ran out there, Greg, and then I think they backed him off and said, you know, let's call a timeout, talk about it a little bit longer. So one timeout remaining for Penn State, but they are warming up here with the long snapper and the... Holder, I get it. If you if you make the field goal, the game's over. You're up right. ten. But as you said, if there's a block, how does that? I mean, the the play you mentioned against Ohio State last year, where they blocked Ohio State returning that that turned the, maybe the whole program around, not just the season for Penn State. No doubt. I mean, it alleviated any concerns. But it, it is a dangerous proposition naturally. If there's any type of mishandling of the snap, Holder just dives on it. Anything like that, you kind of coach those things up. So a good job by James Franklin to take some additional time to think about it. But I actually, in this situation, fourth and medium, I absolutely would kick it and try to end the game here by making it a two-possession game. I still think you give it to 26. Still? I, I don't know. At, got, at fourth got, and six? The, yeah, but you're going to take a few seconds off the clock. Washington doesn't have any timeouts. They still got to go 78 yards to tie the game with no timeouts. This kid's already had two blocked Davis. kicks this year. Tyler Davis. Not to mention he's 9 for 16 on the season. 45-yard try to make it a 10-point lead. It's no good. <laughs> 34 seconds left. And again, they'll have the ball based on where the hold was. So they're going to have it at the 35-yard line. So they gain about seven yards on the missed field goal. That's the other downside of going for the kick, because if you miss it, you get the football where the spot is on the field goal truck. Huge play right there. I'd be remiss if I wasn't thinking a little bit about Boise State against Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl many, many years ago. Watch the hook and ladders. Watch yep. the Statue of Liberty. Imagine Chris Peterson's going to pull out all the stops here on the final drive of the season. Yep, and check that correction. Washington does get it from where the last snap took place from the 28-yard line. Browning in trouble. Going to just throw it away here with the receiver Ty Jones covered. So 26 seconds to go, second and 10 coming up from the Washington 28-yard line. Jake Browning does not have a massive arm, so the Hail Mary option is out more than likely unless they get that ball to the Penn State 45-yard line. So a long way to go before they even consider a Hail Mary. So they might have to go with some trickery with a hook and ladder or something like that. Again, no timeouts. Second and ten. Penn State rushes three, and they get to Browning. He gets out of there. Now throws it downfield, incomplete. Tried to hit Aaron Fuller. And boy, give the Penn State defender credit there. I mean, he was lining up Aaron Fuller, and he held off. And he saw that that pass was going to be over his head because you risk, obviously, a penalty, a targeting foul in that situation. 
the challenge. Here. The challenge here, too, guys, is Penn State's an advantage because they know there's no timeouts and Washington can't use the middle of the field. Three man rush again. Browning's pass high and complete. Overshot Disley. It looked like he actually got behind Brendan Smith. Now it's fourth down with 15 seconds left. And Dante Pettis is going to come into the game. Now Pettis has not played a lot. Maybe he's out there because we may see a little trickery here. Try to get that first down and maybe more. Such a dynamic guy with the ball in his hands. Although not 100% today. You see Penn State backing way off on fourth and ten. Browning stepping up. Caught. And here's the ladder on there's Pettis. He laterals it again, and Penn State's got it. He threw it right to Brandon Smith. He didn't need to do that. There's still five seconds on the clock. Pettis could have just gone out of bounds. They could have had a shot to throw a Hail Mary. Instead, he threw it back to the middle of the field where Brandon Smith caught it, and Penn State takes over. Janet feeling that's why Pettis was out there. Here it was, the same play that they ran several years ago, the hook and ladder. And he actually has Gaskin right behind, too, so you can treat him like an option pitch if you need it. I think they told him on the sideline, hey, this is the final play of the game. And Pettis just unaware of the situation, thinking that he had to score on that one single play. He makes an ill-advised lateral back to the middle of the field. And that will ice this game for the Nittany Lions. What an incredible ending and what a finish for these two programs. Penn State with an 11 win season. The Nittany Lions, the 2017 PlayStation Fiesta Bowl champions. Franklin, he, he got punched by his quarterback on a touchdown celebration, took a shot to the ribs, and then he gets drenched afterwards. His glasses get knocked off, and he's not happy about that either. <laughs> Denny Lions win it by seven. Penn State finishes 11 and two. Washington 10 and three. And Coach Franklin standing by with Tom. Well, Coach, it's never easy. Your team had to hang in there, and you had to finish two back-to-back -back New Year's Six bowl games. What do you have to say about this ball club? It's really proud of our players, our coaches, that our offensive staff did great with it, with a change on offense. So I just I couldn't be more proud. Thank the Letterman, our administration, Dr. Barron and Sandy. You know, it's it's amazing what we've been able to do in a short period of time. But this is just the beginning. We still got a lot of work to do. Those who are familiar with Saquon Barkley and his ability, and what he's meant to this program, they see it physically every Saturday on the field. But for a young man to come out here play, you had a plan for him, how he was going to be utilized. What can you tell people in relationship to what type of kid he is? Well, you know, I get it. You know, this is this is a difficult decision for people to make. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But, you know, it was never really a discussion with Saquon. He was going to play for his teammates. He's going to play for this university. And then, obviously, he's got a decision to make. So uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of him. And just everybody, our whole team, our whole organization, Saquon Barkley is a factor, obviously. But we yeah. just got so many guys that, that gave it all today. You've built this roster back up defensively. You stopped the run today. And Saquon Barkley had a nice day on offense. But offensively, Trace McSorley made a lot of plays. Third down was almost flawless. Assess his performance. Yeah, we were unbelievable on third down. I was going to say the same thing. I thought Coach Ronnie and, and Josh Gaddis and our whole offensive staff did a great job. But Trace just you know, was, was very accurate. You know, we're fortunate to win with the turnovers we got. But I think the third down was really the kind of thing that swung in our favor. Coach, congratulations. Go enjoy this. Thank you so much. Well, they were so close last year, Tom, losing the Rose Bowl, though, a three-point game against SC, but they get the win here. As we welcome you to the Ford Escape postgame, Penn State wins in its second straight New Year's Six, New Year's Six Bowl game. Welcome to the Ford Escape postgame. Final score, 35-28. The Nittany Lions beat Washington. They're up 28-7. The Huskies made a run. 
But too much. Saquon Barkley and Trace McSorley in the end. McSorley throwing for 344 yards, the second most in Penn State Bowl history. Barkley had 25 touches, a lot more than we thought he was going to get. Uh, 18 carries, 138 yards. He had seven catches, 35 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground, including a 92-yard touchdown run, and Saquon is with Tom. Saquon, what a performance today. You and Coach Franklin knew you were going to have a plan for how many touches you were going to get, how you were going to be utilized. What does this team mean to you in relationship to your performance here today? Uh, well, the O-line, you got to give credit to the O-line. The O-line came out and played a tremendous game. Uh, we heard all week about how special Washington defense is and how they're good in the run game. And the O-line really took that to heart and really took that personal day. And I, I think we're able, in one run, we had 92, a 92 yard run, and they only gave about 96 on average for the whole year. So big credits and big, uh, much love to the O-line. And this team, this team is special. Uh, you got to be in the locker room to understand how I feel and, and what I mean by saying that we're special. Uh, this, this group of guys is going to be special. Some of us going to be able to play in the next level. Some may not. But whatever we do, whatever we do in our life, they're going to be special and they're going to be successful in life, and especially to the seniors. The seniors did a great job and a uh, great job of uh, bringing this program back. And I just want to say thank you to those guys. And it's been an honor calling my teammates and calling my brothers. We live in an era where a lot of people are choosing not to play in a bowl game for their NFL draft status. You chose to play here today. What is your status moving forward on whether or not you'll enter the NFL draft? Uh, right now, I'm not even focused on that. Right now, I'm just trying to uh, enjoy the moment, live in the moment, uh, spend time with my teammates. Uh, my family was able to make it to the bowl game this year, uh, spend time with them. And uh, whether it's a day after or whether it's two weeks uh, or to the last day, uh, I'll make that decision. When it, when, it hits me on, when it hits me on the side of my head, I'll know what decision I'll make. But like I said, it's been an honor to play, to play for this team and be able to play for the seniors this year. And when I mean the team, I mean I'm not saying future, I'm leaving. I'm saying this team right here, no matter what, this team will never be together no matter what. And the seniors and all those guys, whoever go off and uh, play in the NFL and be successful businessmen, we're never going to get this back and we're never going to get this opportunity to be part of a family like this again. I'm so thankful for it. Congratulations and go enjoy it, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Obviously, it would be a shock if he came back, given what he's already accomplished and how highly NFL people think of Saquon Barkley. But I like what he said the entire month when he was asked about it. He said, look, I, I'm never going to have this Yeah, we were unbelievable on third down. I was going to say the same thing. I thought Coach Ronnie and Josh Gaddis and our whole offensive staff did a great job. But Trace just you know, was, was very accurate. You know, we're fortunate to win with the turnovers we got. But I think the third down was really the kind of thing that swung in our favor. Coach, congratulations. Go enjoy this. Thank you so much.
about my instincts and average over the years. So big credit to big uh, much love to Odin and this team, this team is special. Uh, you gotta be in the locker room to see how I feel. What I mean by saying that we're special.
Thank you. 